<laughs> All right. Welcome everybody to um, kind of an unplanned stream format. I decided literally like five minutes ago what I was going to do. So Crastorio ended last time. I was thinking to do like a, a post victory stream discovering that, but I'm more in the mood to try something new today. The final countdown. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit later today. I'm still kind of setting up. I'm going to consider this like a practice stream. I'm going to want to do the stream I'm doing today. Uh, probably on my YouTube channel as well, streaming it on YouTube as a first stream. So that should be... It should be good to uh, practice this run at least once. So you're going to get the raw experience today. Right, so what do I mean by <laughs> nuclear warptorio? Well, if you remember in my... Um, I don't know if most of you have seen the YouTube series as well, but there I tried to beat Warptorio in 8 warp zones, which requires a very specific strategy and a lot of cheese. Most of the cheese involves not defending the warp platform at all. So I can load the game from, from the YouTube session. Let's just go, uh, let's just go somewhere over here. Alright, so this is my uh, YouTube playthrough where I used pre-made blueprints. I have a blueprint book for all different stages of the game. I will expand this blueprint blueprint book as I go along in the series and this blueprint book is available on Discord if you want to get it yourself. But that's a, tang a tang tangent, tangent, I don't know. So the thing here is if you go outside and I have to be real quick. Uh, there are tons of biters outside because I don't defend the the top platform. Basically, biters cannot enter your factory, so there is no real need to defend the top. And you can basically cheese the playthrough by just not defending the top. That doesn't mean the game is easy or that beating it in eight warp zones is easy, but it does uh, kind of give a lot of people the feeling that this is a bit. Uh, of a too cheaty playthrough. So I thought, why not do a um, playthrough that is not cheesy? So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. I forgot to put the chat on my phone. So yeah, we're gonna be starting soon. I, I will delete that message on the screen this time, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit later starting today. So I'm not prepared yet. Okay, here I should be able to find my chat, I think. My channel. Alright. Oh, it's afternoon already. Yeah, yeah, I was planning to start two hours ago. I already made a mistake. With the American time settings, switching AM with PM. So the planning said the stream was going to happen 10 hours from now, basically. <laughs> I changed it yesterday, but uh, yeah, a little bit later. A little bit messy this week. Okay, we'll just get into it. Okay, I will first delete that message, because now we are starting. And it's gone. All right. Alright, so we are going to do a real Warptorio playthrough this time. I'm not going to, I'm going to play a random map even, not even this one. I just want to say, um, I'm going to make it even more difficult than regular uh, default Warptorio, where if you don't place anything on the platform just yet, the biters won't come to attack you. So if I speed up time, now we're running at 16 times game speed. Well, not really, I guess. So no biters are coming, even though we are polluting them already. There's just nothing to attack, which is another mechanism you can abuse. But we are going to make sure they're going to be attacking from the 
very first moment. So basically what I'm going to do as soon as I spawn in, I'm going to go in editor mode. Now don't worry, that's not to give myself an unfair advantage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place my a nuclear reactor. On top of my war platform. In this uh, hazard concrete. So later on the physical warp reactor will spawn here. But we are going to start off with basically a similarly looking structure. We're going to feed it two fuel cells that will heat this thing up all the way to 1000 degrees. And if a nuclear reactor is hotter than 900 degrees, something interesting happens when it gets when it gets damaged. And also because now this thing is on the platform, it will immediately start to attract biters. So if I let's see where are the biters? Let me not stand in their way. This should be good. So if I now speed up time. Alright, we can speed up a little bit more. So the, they won't come before you start actually polluting them. But now you can see like... Two minutes in, we have started to pollute them already. So I can probably do this from editor mode as well. Then we can just really view it live. Alright, so they're already gathering to attack. And in Wartorio they don't gather for a long time. They already start to come. Alright, you wait. So we are like three three minutes in, right? <laughs> this is going to be brutal. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. Perhaps I should play regular. <laughs> regular uh, warp Warptorio. Alright, so they are going to destroy this nuclear plant. And that is what's going to happen. And we are going to declare this as a loss. As soon as this happens, it is game over, right? So from the first warp zone, or warp zone zero actually, three minutes in we are going to be attacked. <laughs> that is the premise of this playthrough. So whereas in normal warp Torio you can still kinda automatically cheese the opening, I guess, because... Uh, let's load a new map. Takes a while. So normally you can kinda cheese the opening because you don't die if biters enter your platform, basically. And you can just mine around and do stuff and... Probably you'll get some buggy, bad, at bad attack chunk stuff going on in the background, whereas biters won't attack a certain around a certain location if they were unable to find something in the past. You can kind of get away with getting a good opening, like you saw in perhaps you saw it in my YouTube series in the in the in the first episode. I might just actually play the first episode when I go on a break after a few hours, so you can watch it later. That will, will be a better break screen than just some random still screen in the background. But yeah, there you can basically... I could get away with 10 minutes without being attacked at all. And even if biters enter the platform, nothing happens. But uh, yeah, today it's going to matter. And we probably are going to die a couple of times because I'm, I stay too long on the planet. I can... You start out with a pistol, right? I can, uh, this is my damage. And I need four shots to kill a single biter. And once they start coming, they don't stop coming. <laughs> so yeah, we, we are unable to defend until we research gun turrets. So we need to mine some resources, make some power, make some labs, make some science packs, research the actual technologies, get a lot more resources because these things are expensive. And then the ammo is also quite expensive. So... We are probably going to do a lot of early warps, which is, I understand, is very detrimental to the game. As you can see, that only takes 10 seconds to warp away from the from the first uh, game, from the first zone. Here is already 17 seconds. Third warp zone, 24. This uh, minimum time is going to increase with every planet we warp to, as I understand it. So doing a lot of early warps is going to be quite quite bad. Yeah, it's quickly already getting up to over a minute. 
So that also severely um, <laughs> hampers the ability to, to do a panic warp because you want to warp away in panic but you can't because it takes like 45 seconds <laughs> before you can actually warp out. So that's going to be the idea. All right. That is enough blabber. I've given people enough possibility to join. Oh, hello, already 39 people. <laughs> Didn't think that would go that fast. Gonna be pretty hard. Yeah, we can just warp every three minutes, but the problem with uh, with that <laughs> with that sentence is the word just, because <laughs> yeah, you can warp every three minutes easily if you start on the platform and don't move. But if you also need to go out, gather resources, uh, I don't know, research technology, set up stuff. It's going to be pretty hard to just warp every three minutes. <laughs> right, finally caught a live stream. Yeah, from this moment on, I'm going to make sure all my live streams uh, will end up on a VOD channel on YouTube, including the latest Crastorius streams. Um, I have them from episode six, from part six, I think I saved all of them. So unfortunately, part uh, one to five got lost, but the ending, the post rocket vanilla extension, is going to be available to rewatch later on. Mm. All right. So yeah, should I look my my mods? So these are the mods I'm using: the Evogi, which shows the playtime and the top counter and the evolution rate, that kind of stuff. Chunky Chunks give you, gives you the grid, clean concrete, uh, no black lines in map view that helps with compression for the video as well. Uh, this is uh, the time buttons help me to speed up and slow down the game without using commands. So that can be useful in some situations where we're just doing something grindy and we want to speed up the game. Planetorio and Warptorio is the Warptorio package. Milestones gives you funny alerts, like when you get 1000 red science packs and that stuff. And the loot chest locator, which, um, well, it gives you a message when uh, you locate a loot chest, basically. But we won't be finding loot chests early on at all, because we won't go away from our home area a lot. Or at all, probably. Well, <laughs> enough blabber, let's go. New game. We're gonna play a random seed, I'm not even going to look at it so everything is default let's go the year of living dangerously yeah <laughs> right so first of all let me grab that ammo and we go into editor mode uh, we have to delete the spaceship because the reactor won't fit uh, under the spaceship and the spaceship is going to get destroyed anyway because as soon as you research an upgrade to the platform the spaceship despawns so no loss there so i might start burning my nuclear reactor <laughs> immediately i don't know we'll see if that if it's gonna take damage from that then we will just input two fuel cells which is enough to get the thing up to explosive temperatures <laughs> and i guess that's it Okay, let's just save the game. Probably should make like a, a warp, like a Twitch nuclear warp Torio 001. Yeah, it is, uh, it is taking damage, but I don't think it will explode just yet. All right, this is bad. We've got biters very close by. And <laughs> so the pollution is going to spread to that and even faster than in the example I just did. So we really don't have a lot of time. I think we can basically only mine like a couple plates of iron before we have to head out. All right. Um, let me get that stuff on my bar. I forgot to take the eight plates from the spaceship. That is bad. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be a very 
big contrast to my <laughs> very carefully planned out and executed Warptorial strategy from YouTube. This is going to be a mess, so just so that you know. I already did this wrong as well. Alright. How is the pollution? It's already almost reaching the nests. We're one and a half minute in. This is not going to go well. Yeah. Not even a lot of coal rocks nearby. Also our deconstruction speed is very slow. We don't have steel eggs just yet. But we can we can make two more of these. Let's just chop a couple trees. I don't know why I'm inserting so much coal. Because that is never gonna run out. Yeah, this is already no, this is one chunk out still. Okay, we still have one chunk of time. I thought I made one more, apparently not. Alright, um, I guess let's try just to grab a coal rock or two. And then we just, I think we're just gonna deconstruct and warp out. We can look on the pollution screen. As soon as uh, biter nests start to absorb pollution, we need to make a run for it. Yeah, like now, but they are starting to absorb pollution. I probably should. Is it this one? No, it's that one. Maybe it's both ones at the same time. Okay. <laughs> it takes too long to deconstruct all of this, so at least we gotta be at the platform. We can can probably take down the first attack with just the pistol. I think one of the first things I want actually is the armor and some ammo. There goes all my iron. Okay, here come actually the first biters. Good timing. So yeah, I guess that means it's definitely time to just warp out. Alright, <laughs> that was the first warp zone, <laughs> three and a half minutes. The purpose of the nuclear reactor is to stop me from cheesing. Basically, uh, this thing is going to be superheated at a thousand degrees. And if Byte is destroyed, it's going to explode and end my run. So this is the, going to be a big contrast with... With my... Um, YouTube series where I just cheese everything by staying underground. This is basically like payback. Okay, let's get two more of those. Now we need to get one more up and then I... Yeah. Okay, I need more... Man, the, re the coal is so far away here. Am I just gonna go coal rock hunting then? I think I'll just go coal rock hunting. Problem is, the first world was explored. Oh, thanks, uh, Gizmo Boy, for the subscription to Amazon Prime. So yeah, the problem with this one is we don't have an explored area, just a 5x5 five five around the platform. So now we have only the biters on the screen, so as soon as this starts to go up again, then we need to rush back to the platform. I'm going way too far out. This is too dangerous. I don't know where the biters are in this world. Yeah, so we're not going to get very far in 8 warp zones today. <laughs> Whereas in my YouTube series I 
will finish the entire game by warp zone 8. At least that is the plan. Yeah, I, I cannot really go further out. Here we will hopefully have our first red signs by warp zone 8. So the, the nuclear reactor does not actually create pollution. Um, it just serves to give biters an attack target. So the war platform emits all the pollution. And the... But they won't come to attack if... Oh yeah, it has started already. They won't come to attack... If there's nothing on the platform to attack. So the nuclear reactor just acts as a... An attractor for the biters. And if they destroy it... Which is not that hard to do, it only has 500 hit points. Alright, maybe I can just chop some rocks and trees until they actually come. I need to play zoomed out, but it's kinda hard to cursor over. Yeah, furnace wall would kind of give me a small delay, perhaps. That is not such a bad idea. So I don't have... I have actually a lot of stone. Let's do that. So eventually I want to place gun turrets around. Um, how am I going to do this? I guess... I guess just like this, like a windmill pattern. Alright, that gives me some options to play some chests as well. Okay, here, here, here they come. First biters, so yeah. Time to warp out yet again. <laughs> Alright, looks like the furnace... It does something, but they can just walk through it, so... Not sure how much that will help. <laughs> here we go. That's the first two warp zones done. So we're also going to get in the more difficult warp zones quite early on in this run. Okay, I think I'm just still going to go for the iron. And I think I need to get some copper as well. Man, it would have really helped a lot if I would get a... ...a decent starting world. Where I could spend like 6 minutes before the first pollution reach the biters. Alright, we're gonna go for copper as well, so we can handcraft some some signs already. Because as soon as we have gun turrets, we can, we can stay a little bit longer on the planet than the first attacks. Alright. I could do pipes around the reactor as well, but I want to... I need to stay on the platform as well to warp away. And if you stand on the very edge of the platform, you die upon warping out, so... I want to give myself a little bit of space. Okay, let's see. Can we already create some stuff? We need a water pump, two boilers, two steam engines, two labs... Some power lines... And also 30 science packs. Alright, so no biters are absorbing pollution just yet. Yeah, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot walk away. I have to just watch this graph basically. Um, 30, so what technologies do we want? Definitely turrets. Military automation, that's 30. 
I guess in this playthrough we're also going to want stone walls. Although I don't really have space to place them on the platform anyway. I don't know. Maybe it's... Maybe I don't need... Let's just... Uh, okay, let's uh, go for stone walls as well and we'll make two extra. Alright, we're still good. I'm gonna make a save here in the middle. 3B. What is the absolute minimum of resources needed to beat Factorio without biters? Well, you could watch my uh, minimalist Factorio run, which I did on YouTube. It's like Factorio Tunnel Vision or The Minimalist. I think The Minimalist is the supercut, whereas Tunnel Vision is the the playthrough. They're both the same, just the supercut is stitched together. And there I basically do exactly that, beat uh, Factorio with the minimum amount of resources needed basically. We just set uh, the technology to go to our rocket silo without, without any uh, techs which are not on the way to rocket silo, including military and turrets and stuff. Um, so that is going to be kind of close to the absolute minimum resources required. Alright, somehow we are still not polluting any biters. What the heck? Must uh, be a lucky spawn with uh, no biters that nearby. Okay, now we are. Are we? No, we are still not... Okay, I'm, I'm getting nervous, though. And I have a lot to deconstruct and it's a far way to run. That is going to be enough copper for a while. Let's keep track of what we have. It's still not, so... Let's put this here as well, maybe wood. Uh, coal. I guess we should put gun turrets here. And ammo. And I should get some fish perhaps. So basically I stopped, uh, I stopped doing that, uh, healing yourself with fish. Fish are like medicates here, 80 damage they heal. You can eat two of them every second. Okay, now we are polluting, alright. I already thought, what, is this some sort of biteless world or something? Alright, but now we do have our sign set up. Which means things are going to change. I guess in the next world we will focus on getting gun turrets researched. We have actually a decent amount of resources to actually make some gun turrets as well. I have no idea what direction those biters are going to be coming from. Okay, we are under attack. Oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> It's good they have the furnaces to get distracted by. That was a good call. We need to push the war button. Okay, yes. When they start coming, they don't stop. Right. But these are the kind of attacks we can still manage with, with a couple gun turrets. From, hopefully from the next warp zone on. Here we go. This world reminds us of home and the resource patches are actually super close by, so that is helpful. Again, it's a desert world though, no trees, no nothing. Um, actually, for the minimum amount of resources, I remember Jokey Pokey also did some sort of like manual Factorio run, which I imagine is also going to be pretty close to minimal resources. Right, I am going to set up all these miners, actually. 
mostly iron we need now for gun turrets and ammo so all of all 16 are going on here all right that was all my coal okay i cannot i cannot spend all my coal <laughs> i need some for the boilers We're going to be handcrafting a lot, I, I imagine. Alright, temporary power plant. Oh, 42 science packs, the only true number. And here we go, let's research gun turrets. Military, automation and stone walls. See if we can get this done on this world. I'm going to grab some fish just to be safe. I guess this fish, Ben the fish, will leave alone in the middle of the lake. Okay, let's put these on coal. Okay, no biter pollution just yet. Alright, we have gun turrets, so we're immediately gonna make a bunch of those. Probably I should make some ammo as well Okay, bunches and bunches of ammo. This run is not going at all how I like it to go. <laughs> I guess we are polluting already. No? Not yet? Just putting one gun turret everywhere. Not that I think that we uh, can do much. But it will distract the biters from destroying my mines and stuff. So now we can basically start to actually put down a defense. Right, I think we also need to make some iron chests. I guess we also need to make some repair packs. Oh, those are expensive. Let's just make five. Alright, it's starting. We want to try to complete science. So let's keep the gun turrets up there. Then we can start deconstructing this stuff. Okay, attack is coming in on, on our 
uh, research facility. Man, I need I need steel axe, man. This is just too slow. I need to be hand crafting stuff at all times. Let's go with more gun turrets for now. Yeah, this is way too slow, man, for deconstructing stuff. It's actually a, a safety hazard. Especially if I'm taking out gun turrets while attacks are coming in. I need to be able to take those out a lot faster. Okay, actually are all four of our research projects are done. But we got a new record. We are already staying for 6 minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> On this uh, warp zone. Okay, I guess we're gonna try... To put an actual amount of gun turrets on here. Okay, we have 30 seconds to warp. Yeah, I think I'll just push the button because it starts to ramp up. Yeah, look how, how slow it is to deconstruct the gun turrets. running out of ammo. Let's just make everything into ammo. Just look at look at these amount of biters man, that is just brutal. Alright. So I'm, I'm going to showcase uh, something important which is uh, the economy, the iron economy. Basically at this moment we do 5 damage. If you see, look on the right side here, you can see the turret does 5 damage. And the small biter Okay, let's go in editor mode. I will reload this. So we go here. And if we put two magazines in. Which is 20 bullets. A magazine has 10 bullets. And we put down... Uh, five biters. You would say they it would take three bullets to kill a biter. Because it has 15 health. But the thing is, these guys, they heal. They heal just very slowly, a little bit. So after three bullets, they end up with like 0.01 health. And you need a fourth bullet to kill them. Which means we will spend 20 bullets to kill these guys. So if I play it, this will spend all 20 uh, bullets. If it doesn't get destroyed. Alright, yeah. So the ammo is uh, finished entirely. We can put it at half speed. We can probably just see that it, physically see that it shoots four bullets per biter. Um, small biter. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you, so, so now you can hear it as well. It takes four bullets to kill a biter. But if you research just a single damage upgrade, like this one, I'm going to shift click it to have it researched already. So now we will do a little bit more than 5 damage, which is very important. Now we do 6.05 damage and that means we now kill those small biters in 3 bullets. So Alright, so that is like a uh, 25% resource save immediately just by researching one technology of our 100 science packs. And since we are going to be taking out a lot of biters, that's going to be super, super important. Um, and then the next thing we do 
Well, I guess, yeah, we will get into that later, but this is why we are going to want to upgrade the damage on our gun turrets as soon as possible, basically. Hey, Kvalun, how's it going? Sorry, I didn't re-chat for a while. My phone just got black, on black screen. Let's see, is there something I missed? Oh, I missed a lot of stuff. I was still about the minimum factorio, yeah. I guess uh, you could uh, like theoretically calculate the absolute minimum. If you had like infinite time. Alright, so what are we doing? I guess we are mining iron. We got our first gun turrets. I guess we're mining a coal rock. <laughs> Alright, I do want my repair packs on here. Let's repair that superheated nuclear reactor actually. <laughs> this might seem important. Streaming idea in Discord. Okay, I'll, I'll have a look at it. Um. Alright, this setup may seem familiar. Yeah, the Z inputting is a little... A little cringy. Hey, now we need we need a lot more gun turrets. Basically, we can defend this now, but we also oh hello, <laughs> that's pretty close by, I would say. We're gonna want uh, a lot of gun turrets to defend everything else as well. So let's throw that pistol away, actually. And we'll get the machine gun instead. Alright, here they come, the first ones. I have to keep a look on this though, there is barely any ammo in there. Alright, that is going to be defended for a bit. Cool, 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 we need a little bit more coal in here. Basically, we're gonna need more burner miners. Oh, we're gonna, we need more of everything. <laughs> That's a little bit a problem. Right, you can see in the night that this thing is superheated, 1,000 degrees. I guess I should just ch throw away those nuclear fuel, those spent cells. I was going to come and insert some ammo, but I don't have any. Looks like we're not going to be staying too long either. It's going to be too expensive. I'm going to try to mine some coal as well. I think I should not. 
How is it going? Looks like it's only this nest for now. Okay, the first attacks are gonna come in over there. That's the sign for me to start deconstructing. It takes so long to take all this stuff down, man. Okay, one turret is out of ammo over there. I don't know. Kill the biter base. I mean, this is <laughs> the time it would take me to kill this biter base would give the pollution the chance to spread to four other biter bases instead. So all these worlds are just like temporary <laughs> throwaway worlds. Right. Let's see if these guys actually cannot find this platform. Oh man, oh, half of my gun turrets are out of ammo now. Yeah, okay. So we still cannot afford to stay on a world. Basically, there is the next attack. And I'm trying to input my armor. <laughs> trying to input my armor in the turret. Right. That's going to be 4Z. Yeah, right. So I just saved. So let's actually um, explore the entire world. This is the entire pollution cloud. Looks like we got a kind of a good spawn, but taking out this would not have done much. We are already polluting these guys. We start to pollute these guys. Pretty soon these guys as well. This is a good spawn though, except for this base. Just look, uh, look how many biters are coming from that southern base, man. There's just like multiple attack groups are on the way at all times. Here comes one. The next one is already gathering. They're basically joining the attack as fast as the nests will let them spawn. So actually, the limit of biters attacking is not really pollution based, but more how many nests there are, because there's like a cooldown a cool down timer on the spawn frequency of these nests. I can probably show that. Debug info. You can now see the spawning cooldown on the right side. It counts down from like 300 something to zero. Yeah, it's over 300 and then it uh, when it's zero uh, biter spawns and then those like immediately join the attack so that is the limit if there were more bases here the attacks would be larger because the nest just cannot physically spawn biters fast enough to to make the attacks large enough all right so let's see what happens if the biters just Let's just see what happens. Will they go for the reactor or they go for the gun turrets first? Okay, they go for the reactor. Oh, that should <laughs> lead to a nice explosion. So yeah, they just need a couple, like 10 seconds to take it down. Probably less if there's more. Oh. <laughs> this is the safe distance apparently. <laughs> Alright. Just give me, I need uh, 30 seconds. One moment, please. All right. So yeah, let's load the game. Man, it's just so hard to get resources. First of all, let's put like 10 ammo in each of these gun turrets. Oh, I should push the war button, I guess. Ok, 
We have 18 seconds. Can probably mine a rock or two. Alright. Let's see what world we get. Oh man. Alright. Should I keep this world? I guess I'll keep this world. So this is just kind of a useless world. I'll show you why. Um, let's go in editor mode. So... Can I? Alright. So this is basically an island. Tiny island. Without biters, but also without resources. So this is the entire island. The only thing on this island is a, a bunch of trees basically. So we could gather some wood. If you have resources, you can actually... Uh, you can like design your base a little bit in peace. That's what these worlds are for. But we don't quite have a base just yet. So I don't really see what we can do here. I guess we'll just chop some trees and, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Just chop some trees. I have 25 copper, so I also cannot make a lot of red signs. I cannot research anything useful. It would cost too much. Can do some slow handcrafts. Two more gun turrets, apparently. Make more ammo. I guess we can perhaps try to get more, more of these. Uh, 64. How many furnaces do I have left? I need to get some stone then on the next world. Okay, let's just chop some trees. Yeah, I, I, I don't have stone to make walls. Walls cost like 10 stone per piece. So it's like 5 stone bricks for a wall and it's like 2 stone for 1 stone brick. So two stone for one stone brick. So it's like ten stone each. They are pretty expensive. Actually, how many walls would we need to to fully cover this? Okay, we need forty-eight walls to put a wall around this. So that's uh, that's like 500 stone, a uh, full line of stone. I, I guess we can speed up time a little bit on this planet. This is why you have the time control. Because, yeah, there's nothing interesting going on here. Just chop some wood. We can use the wood for fuel as well. We can also maybe try to think of a plan, because at the moment I just feel like I'm running around like a headless chicken from ore patch to ore patch and panicking at the first sign of polluting biters. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to spend a little bit of time making a plan. Also, I can get up to a hundred fish. I don't think... We'll see if we actually will need fish, but... Yeah, it's good to have at least some of them, I guess. To get you out of a pickle. Okay, two more. Wait, right, that's a hundred fish. Yeah, I don't think I will need... I will really need that much wood. Let's get up to 400 and then we'll call it a day.
There's not even rocks on this uh, island, so I cannot mine stones anywhere. There's just uh, just trees. There is no rocks. There's nothing else. Right, so let's go back to normal speed. Hey, Skelter. <laughs> Welcome back. So we are playing Warptorio with a superheated nuclear reactor, which only purpose is to basically blow up my entire base as soon as biters attack us. So this is like an, a, a, a mirror, a polar opposite of the YouTube playthrough I'm doing, where we basically have to defend the platform from the first minute, literally the first minute. So <laughs> yeah, we are already five war zones in and all we got to show for is a handful of gun turrets. We got to a, a water world, which is basically a small island without biters, but also without resources, even without rocks. And it's time to start devising some sort of a plan because I'm running around like a, a chicken. So I think what I need to do is I need to get some temporary science setup going. I can actually like just like develop some blueprints. Like some 16 lab, 16 assembler setup or something. I didn't even make a single assembler just yet. Can I make assemblers? Should I make assemblers? Let's make uh, two assemblers. Alright, we have a bunch of chests. Can I walk between this? Yeah, I, I still can walk between this. So I can basically wall off my base like this. So it's kinda closed off. Right. I don't think we will need walls. So this is basically going to be kind of similar. I'm gonna need a little bit more power if we want to power a bigger operation like this. I need just to get a, a red science automation thing going on probably not the next world. The next world we need to acquire uh, copper and iron, but maybe then we're just going to sacrifice mining on the world in favor of setting up some actual red signs. There's a lot of red signs, especially with the added Warptorio technologies. I think researching all the floors is all red signs. So we can get the factory floor unlocked as well, the harvester floor and the boiler floor. There's like entirely behind red signs. So what kind of order of magnitude are we thinking about? So then, let's say, let's say two of these technologies. I'm kind of, so in my YouTube series I researched three of these, which makes the burner miners slightly faster than the stone furnaces. But I think, because I want to, because I'm in panic mode all the time, I want my furnaces to remain faster than the miners for now. So let's say two levels of this. Then the burner miners will run at 96% of the speed of a stone furnace. So that is exactly good. It will basically give us 20% more resources without tying up our furnaces and smelting ore when we want to head out, basically. So that's going to be uh, 60 science packs in total. Okay, that is 70, 90, 120. This is a prereq with all that stuff. 170, 100 and... 20 to 90 oh, there's a lot we definitely want this damage upgrade 360 like 460 ish speed we don't really need 460 ish this one we want as well 5 6 so 700 1k 2k mm, two levels of this that's uh, oh, like, wait, 1k, 1.1, 1.2, 1 1.3, let's say about 2,000. It looks like about 2,000 red signs. That is 4,000 iron and 2,000 copper. So it's probably not going to happen in a single batch. Do I need to make a blueprint? I don't think I really need to make a blueprint of this. I can just set it up. I cannot make it. We just need to warp out, man. There's just nothing to do here. <laughs> Thanks, Discarnite, for uh, 
the subscription yeah so some of the first technologies the most important ones is, i think is going to be physical projectile damage one and actually uh, war projectile rounds one is going to be very important as well basically for the the same reason all right so i'll, I'll just do this again Put down a gurret, a gun turret. Put in some ammo. Alright, I will put down one single biter. We're gonna run at a quarter game speed. Alright, here we go. Four shots. Alright. Let's see if we can actually mouse over the health of the biter to see how many health he will have left. Yeah, one health. Yeah, okay. It rounds up to one health. Alright, so now we research this first damage upgrade. That gets us to six damage. I just spoke about that, but we'll do it one more time. Now it's three bullets. Alright, now I'm gonna make a, a separate save. Because I want to load this. The thing is, if you research the vanilla... Uh, the next vanilla upgrade it gives you another 10 percent damage boost so now we have it researched we get 7.2 damage so that actually has no effect at all on small biters it's still going to be three bullets but if we now load our game And instead we research this war projectile rounds. Wait, we need to go back in editor mode apparently. No, we are in editor mode. If we research this war projectile rounds, which is also only red signs, we get 15% damage bonus. And that is a very, very, very important difference. Because now, if we research this one, we have... 7.8 damage and since the small biters have uh, 15 health uh, now we are actually killing them in two shots each so that is extremely extremely important so basically with just these two damage upgrades of red signs 100 and 250 science packs we basically halved the iron cost Plus that every gun turret basically has uh, double the DPS against small biters. It shoots uh, twice as fast, so each gun turret shoots twice as fast, which means we can deal with biter attacks twice the size without them actually reaching our turrets. These 12 gun turrets are going to shoot like 24, basically. So, And it's going to cost us only half the iron to defend our base. So those technologies are going to be... Uh, super super important we can get rid of this one we can load our real save all right <coughs> yeah so now um right so those two damage upgrades are going to be hugely important and after that the next threshold is going to be once it takes a very uh, large amount of technologies to get to here we go again <laughs> sorry about this but just want to showcase this five damage so with two technologies we get to i get back these again this one uh, so now we are back at 7.8 damage and now it just takes a lot of uh, extra upgrades. Uh, now we're at 9 damage. So then we already have to get into military signs. 300 military signs packs. That's still not enough. We're at 12 damage. And only once we research oh, this one. Another war projectile rounds. Still not enough. 14.45 damage. Which means it's still two-shotting biters, right? Uh, we spent a lot of uh, extra research on upgrades, but it did not bring us any. It did not bring us anything, at least not against 
Not against small biters. Alright, I should probably put uh, only one turret in range because that's not really clear without it. So all those expensive upgrades don't have any effect on small biters. Of course it has effect on medium biters, but before we will be... Before we will be dealing with uh, a lot of medium biters... Uh, what is that sound? Kill the first medium... Oh, wait. <laughs> the milestones achievement. All right, we are cheating this, but whatever. So it, it takes uh, like... Yet another uh, 700 and like six to 700 military signs before we get the power to actually one shot small biters. Right. So now we do 17 damage, but for 700 military signs, you can also get flamethrowers, which um, which only costs 50 military signs. So. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> but yeah, the first two so the first two cheap upgrades basically go from four shots to three shots to two shots, and then you need both loads of extra upgrades to get to one shotting. So we are probably not gonna invest in more damage after those first two upgrades. Alright, we're making a plan. Yeah, red ammo is basically um Let's see, military 2. Red ammo costs, as you can see, 4 iron, uh, 5 copper and 1 steel. 1 steel is 5 iron, so that's 14 resources compared to the 4 resources that yellow ammo costs. And red ammo always does 60% uh, extra damage regardless of the upgrades you have, because those apply equally to yellow and red ammo. So basically you get like 60% extra damage. Uh, for about three times the cost, so it is uh, more economic to stick with yellow ammo as long as you can. The only times when it is better to use red ammo is if the biter's armor is very close to your actually actual damage value. So let's say a biter with uh, with five armor would come around, I would do like half a point of damage to that guy. But red ammo then would do like seven. Uh, red ammo would do. Uh, 8 damage, so that means 3 damage per shot, which is like 6 times as much. So then it becomes more economical to use red ammo, but in almost all cases yellow ammo is superior to red ammo um, in terms of uh, cost, as long as you uh, can upgrade it to a high enough level, which you can in Warp Torio because you have all these extra these extra 3 levels of gun turret uh, damage upgrades early on. Which is a huge boost. All right. Yeah, I will. I will upload the vod to YouTube. I won't do any editing, editing on it. But yeah, I will just have like a vod channel for people who miss the streams and on Twitch they get deleted after some time and etc. etc. Um, right. So that is super important. What else is super important? I would argue getting steel access super important because now we are very slow. We need to do a lot of mining so we need uh, steel processing and this one probably this one we can afford as well there's two levels of this the second one costs 100 okay i think that has a higher priority to get those things than to get like factory levels of the factory floor and stuff i don't think that is a high priority at all since anyway we will need to defend the platform and i guess Two levels of mining productivity is going to be also high priority. Alright, so we know what we need to do. We need to get some dam uh, 100 for this one. I think this one is too expensive to go for that early. Uh, two levels of this, so that's one. That's 160. And what else did I say? <laughs> I already forgot. I oh, yeah, steel X. Uh, 260, alright. 310. So let's say if we can make 300 resources worth of red signs, we should be off to a good start. Oh, we need this one as well. Okay, let's say 400. We can get logistics as well. 400 red signs is our goal. Basically. Let's, let's just put those technologies on the bar. 
I think we're first going to go for mining production. Then the damage upgrade. And then steel axe. Uh, 60, 160, uh, to 10, to 60, 360. All right, and then we can get logistics and optics as well. That is the plan. <laughs> All right, maybe it was not so bad to have this uh, this island world where we could rest and think a little bit. Okay, we have 10, 10 ammo in every gun turret. That gives us a little bit of time to react once the attacks start coming in. I think we're ready to warp out. Let's save as Z. And we go. Okay, it's gonna take 30 seconds. Let's speed it up. Right. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I love this mod, man. Actually, it's a modded mod. All right. No time to lose. We'll speak about modded mods later. I cannot do two things at the same time, if you hadn't noticed. Especially when I'm inserting coal, I'm just... I just, uh... Silence up mid-sentence. Like now, because I'm just focusing on what I'm doing. Okay, we need, we need coal miners as well. So this world is in the name of resource acquisition. How did I miss this furnace two times? All right, and ammo. I don't have actually. I actually don't have ammo to. Uh oh, thanks, uh, me and Loco for a level three subscription. Whoa, I don't know. Actually, I actually don't know what the difference is between the different levels of subscription but I'm just going to imagine it's three times as good as a level one subscription for now so thanks a bunch man sorry I missed your uh, subscription all right we have 32 of these guys uh, we need copper uh, we need coal as well okay we might be collecting resources for two warp zones Yeah, three, uh, it's five times as good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I just uploaded a... Uh, Twitch is not so generous with the amount of emotes it uh, unlocks for you. So, yeah. I just filled up all the slots and all the different levels. And I guess... Uh, with uh, the passing of time, I will get access to more. Okay, I'm just basically... Oh, I should go refuel that. Can I leave my burners alone here? Maybe. It's, it's just starting. So I, I don't have any more gun turrets. Okay, that is all my... I'm gonna grab two of them. <laughs> but thanks, uh... Oh, Mum. Thanks for the gifted subs, uh... 4700. 4700. Man, all the sounds. <laughs> okay, we, we attacks start coming. And I think we are going to... Uh, we won't get around to mining copper on this world, I don't think.
Alright, yeah, it's starting. Without the, without the upgrades for the ammo, it's just too expensive to stay. I need, uh, I need copper to make more gun turrets. They take 10 copper a pop. Hey, Scav dude! <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> subscription. <laughs> Alright, let's try to mine a little bit of copper before we head out. I hope that should hold just a, a little longer. And we don't seem to be attacked from the south just yet. What kind of system was that? I guess it's alright. We can start to make more gun turrets. Man, this, uh, <laughs> this is only my second playthrough of a stream and it's uh, this one is a lot a lot harder to <laughs> a lot harder to manage than Crastorio where it was kind of chill just like figuring out big builds and all that stuff but here I'm just like on the edge every time basically Alright, let's go pick up the copper already. We're actually getting targeted on the copper now, it seems. <laughs> Alright, smashed goal again. What should the next goal be is, is the question. Thanks, Kvalun, for the uh, <laughs> subscriptions. I think you should kind of stop doing that now. You already did a lot of those. But yeah, t thanks nonetheless. As you, as you probably notice, I still feel quite awkward with all this subscription stuff. I don't know, it's just, I just cannot get used to this. Alright. I thought we were maybe going to last 10 minutes on this world, but apparently not yet. Okay, we do have... We don't have enough uh, resources for 400 science packs. So, so we're gonna have to... Man. <laughs> alright. Guys, you can stop it now, alright? I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. <laughs> Think of as Patreon supporters in real time. I don't know. I guess the thing is, man. I don't even have a, a schedule, you know. To I'm not like streaming. I don't have the promise of streaming on a on a regular basis or something. So it kind of feels not right or something to have. Yeah, what could happen? <laughs> I just totally forgot that biters are demolishing my nuclear reactor and that half of my gun turrets are out of ammo. That is what could happen. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Looks like 10 ammo is not great. Right. Okay, that's a lot of biters. Attacks from every direction now. We have... To, I'm already too late. Not too late, but yeah. Could have warped out earlier. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable with all these people. 
I know subscribing is one thing, you know, and the, the gifted subs. I have been thinking about this a little, a little bit. So I kind of don't like this about Twitch. The 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 gifted subs is it's a nice way to support the streamer. But on the other hand, um, I I cannot, you know, if uh, by accident, uh, you know, if someone supports on Patreon or somebody makes a donation through PayPal, I can refund that if uh, the person changes his mind later on. Uh, or if, just let's say you made a big donation and one week later you lose your job or something, then uh, I can offer you to refund that, that, uh, that donation, you know. But with these gifted subs, I, I cannot really do that because, or, or can I? I don't know. I don't actually have like payments from Twitch um, coming in already or something. I don't know. Maybe I could actually do like a part of it, but uh, a yeah, part of the, a, a large portion also goes to Twitch, I think. So, and the person has the subscription anyway. I cannot take away the subscription from the person. That is what I meant. So I'm kind of on the fence how I feel about gifted subs. They, on one hand, yeah, it's a nice way to just support the the streamer like mon with uh, with money. On the other hand, it's also it feels exploitative somehow on the on the viewer. So I'm not really I'm I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable about it. It's like a kind of an exploitative mechanism behind it. It's, it doesn't feel like when pe people go to Patreon, they go there. They physically choose to do that. I don't know. I, I'm I'm getting lost on my own words. Uh, words. I hope I got the the gist of it across. But yeah, this this kind of a. I'm not sure about how, how I feel about this Twitch, this whole Twitch revenue generating stuff just yet. It, it just feels a little too exploitative to. To feel, to feel honest, to feel just. I don't know how exactly to word this. <sighs> right. Just remember how expensive TV subscriptions are when you say this. I'm very careful with my finances. Okay. If anyone who did like a big chunk of uh, stuff, uh, subscriptions, gift subs subscriptions and stuff, changes his mind later on, just contact me. Um... You can find my email address on YouTube in the about section for direct contact. That's the fastest way. The other ways are probably slower, Discord and stuff, because I am quite bad with social media and stuff. But yeah, just uh, just calm down. <laughs> I guess I'm speaking to myself. I'm the one who needs to calm down and continue the stream. Yeah, let's just do that. You know what I'm trying to say? I just cannot get it out of my mouth because English is not my first language, and it's quite kind of hard to get it all into words like this. Right. Warp. Right. Thanks. Thanks for the. Thanks for the re reassurance, guys. That's that's really nice. Alright, back over to the <laughs> French team. <laughs> Bonjour. Alright, I think we should make a bunch loads of ammo. Maybe not that much, but we'll just have it in the background. Okay, I need to expand my war platform as well. If I expand my war platform, that means I can automate the creation of ammo and the distribution of it to the gun turrets. Right. Something is missing. It is not iron and copper and coal. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, so one of the types of planets you won't find in my YouTube playthrough is the planet type where something is missing. Because that is basically 
Well, if it's like this with stone missing, it does not really hurt. But when it's like iron that's missing, that is really bad. I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing. Um, do I need copper? Yeah, I need more copper. Alright. We have 16 gun turrets as of this moment. Okay, this is the last world where we acquire resources. After this we will have enough to actually do some research. I guess we can get away with four gun turrets. Let's get a couple on coal as well until the text start coming in. I have one damaged one. A little bit of inventory cleaning. Okay, no damage stuff remains in my inventory, so that's good. Okay. Yeah, Biters on War Platform is dead. We do have some gun turrets up now, but there's just a little ammo inside, so... Not really great. It took us like seven... <laughs> We're in Warp Zone 7, man! In my YouTube playthrough, if all goes well... We should be done. At this point. I just need some more ammo to put in these guys. So we are going to expand to some stuff which we need, let's say 8, 16 assemblers and we also go for 16 labs. That's a lot of handcrafting though, I guess we have to do it. We'll see how that goes. Let's see pollution. Yeah, already a lot. Probably from the south. I think we need to reinforce the platform. Okay, let's try to grab the resources before we do so. Especially the coal is very bulky. Alright, we are about to get to the point where we get the first inventory full message. <laughs> that is not bad. Let's put away some stuff which we don't need to carry on us all the time. Just a little bit maybe. Okay, looks like the attacks are coming from this side, so let's insert the ammo on this side as well. Okay, so I don't have any extra ammo, so I should be careful not to stay too long on this planet. I don't want to interrupt my handcrafting queue. Alright, I calm down a bit. <laughs> Alright, this is... Okay, can I zoom out and just have a view on all three of my 
for my builds. Okay, copper has run out. Let's go refuel that. Theoretically, we have enough for our 400 red signs, which we were planning to make. So we are good to go. So now it would be not so bad to get this uh, this ocean planet where we can rest. Because that means we can have uh, we have enough time to uh, to research all these things in peace. Well, it looks like this plant actually does not pollute the bite as hard as the last one. Yeah, this was the last warp zone. Now it got up. There's probably a small nest that can absorb only a limited amount of pollution. It, did, it didn't shoot up. Now a new nest is starting to be polluted though. So probably we're going to get increased attacks fairly soon now. So yeah, the bite revolution is not at all the problem just yet. We are never going like over 5% or something. You need to go past 20 minutes to get the medium biters. Oh, I basically just killed my entire coal miner. That happens sometimes. But now I'm just trying to stay as long as on this planet to let as much of this crafting queue complete as I can. Yeah, it looks like attacks are now ramping up though. <laughs> Did I... Ah. Shhh. Nine. <laughs> okay. Cancel, cancel, cancel. It is ammo. I almost spilled my entire inventory over the floor. Okay, we're heading out again. Oh, we need that Steel X technology so bad, man. I guess the attacks on the war platform are also way stronger now. Alright. So these attacks won't stop. Now they'll just continue to the platform. How is it going here? Yeah, ammo is low. Let's see if we can. Right. Okay, we don't have the inventory space to pick up all of that. Um, let's try to get the labs back up. Six labs, ten more. All right. Just let the ammo craft. Man, I am a mess, man. I am <laughs> a total mess. Yeah, we need to be fast. Oh man, there's really many biters uh, attacking now. I do not want to leave behind all these miners, that would set me back too much. Man, we're only an hour in this playthrough, I'm stressing out like, I don't know. <laughs> Playtime 57 minutes in total. Okay, how's it going? Stuck in the trees. That should uh, that should give us some time to deconstruct these coal miners. Mm. 
danger or does not really sound like it would be a chill mod, but perhaps it is. <laughs> Thanks uh, Neva for the subscription as well. Alright, we have collected everything. I think we'll stop making ammo for now. This is going to be 14 stacks, so I can cancel that. Alright, let's uh, push the warp button. It is time to go. We made it over 10 minutes on a warp zone. That is something. Apparently I, I already didn't save for two warp zones. Alright, let's push the button. We don't quite have our 20 laps just yet. 16 laps just yet. But it'll, it'll take some time to set up anyway. I think we'll be fine. We also need a bunch of inserters actually. Let's first make a bunch of inserters. Uh, I was hoping we didn't have to spend that ammo, but apparently we do. Again, something is missing. This time we don't really care too much about it, since it looks like iron is missing from this planet. So yeah, that is a big, uh, a big problem. Alright, but this time we're just going for a research base. Um, preferably horizontally. I don't, I don't have any pipes, so that is not gonna happen. Okay. We do have our assemblers, we can still make it horizontal like this. Alright. Whatever. Beautiful OCD base like this. We just need to make... Let's see, this is 100, 200, 300... Okay, that is already enough. 400 iron gear. I guess I just should be making some iron gears for personal use as well. For example, for these five laps. Some copper wire could come in handy. Okay, then give me a little bit of time to set up some gun turrets. Fortunately, we are kind of shielded from both sides. I don't expect attacks from the bottom, since those are going to go past the platform. So I guess we can just do something like this. And hope we survive. Okay, we will need more ammo. Okay, now we can make our five laps a lot faster, I imagine. Yeah, that's, that's a lot better. No iron gears, no copper wires to handcraft. Alright. Now we can start making red signs. Okay, we are making 400 red signs. Then it's just a matter of getting up the laps. Let's deconstruct this again. And we have space for 16 laps. Probably could be making even more. And we are getting started on warp mining production. Actually, we can move this to the back since we are not mining at the moment. So let's select that. I think the most important one is the damage upgrade. We also could be upgrading to the heavy armor actually. We have a little bit extra signs, so then we don't do logistics and optics, but we do heavy armor instead. Logistics and heavy I forgot the exact count, but yeah, we'll see if we have enough. We can make some extra if we don't. Let's get this thing started. Finally! 
finally some signs. I have only 300 iron left over. So we're not going to need <laughs> these guys. Okay, now basically I have to just try to get as much research done. In the limited time we have. So these technologies take 30 seconds for a science pack. To be consumed in the lab. That is what those 30 seconds stand for. Consuming one science pack takes 30 seconds. These things produce red signs, which has a crafting time of 5 seconds. They produce them 10 seconds, because these assemblers have a, a crafting speed of 0 0.5. So, this produces a red science pack every 10 seconds. So that's 3 science packs in 30 seconds, so it can supply 3 laps. So this is a decent uh, setup for the... It will be con uh, consumed as fast as, as it is produced with this amount of laps and assemblers. No cheese, <laughs> yeah. Finally, finally a playthrough without cheese, I would say. What can we do? We can probably pick up some coal rocks. Let me just chop my coal rocks in peace. Oh, there is stone on this planet. Then what else? Okay, then what else is missing? It could be uranium or it could be oil that is missing. Oh, actually, I don't have any ammo in my... <laughs> well, I think I should just make ammo from all the rest of the iron. It is very bad to get in a situation where you don't have any ammo in at all. Because if you then run out of ammo, you cannot refill it. The run is basically over. Okay, we get damage one, man. All right. And we get the 10 extra minutes. Right now. This is a 5 second technology, which is why it's suddenly consuming a lot faster. It takes only 5 seconds to consume a science pack. All right. We first awoke on this platform. We need to rebuild this stuff. And return home. So it is like an official kind of goal to return home. Cobble together some wires and attach it to the platform. Well, I guess that stands for this nuclear reactor. And at least we feel more in control. Even if we are unsure if we manage to achieve anything. I guess we could get into the lore a little bit. Steel processing, also a 5 second technology. That is why <laughs> all the laps are um, doing. But many, second, uh, many technologies are 30 seconds. That's a, a good benchmark to base your builds on. Right, can we get through all of this though? I hope so. All of these are 30 second technologies. And heavy armor is 30 seconds as well. Um, yeah, we cannot make the heavy armor. That requires actual steel. And I just made all of my remaining ammo into bullets. I just said it is very bad to end up without... Without bullets, but yeah. We are basically now without. I kind of think we cannot get all of this done. Okay, 10 seconds per craft, that's 220 seconds, 4 minutes. Four minutes, but I cannot craft additional ammo. Looks like we are not getting attacked from this side at all. <laughs> well, it looked like it. Before I said it. Yeah, the reactor is at, at 1000 degrees. I will just blow it up for one... One. Let's make a safety save in the middle as well. I'll use this as an excuse to make a reload point in case I screw up this warp zone. 
I have a feeling I'm going to want to stay too long to get my technologies researched, get overwhelmed and die. So this is what happens basically if the reactor blows up. Or if the biters get on my platform and uh, attack the reactor. Then this happens. And the playthrough is over. So this is like a sudden death mechanism. It forces me to actually defend the platform unlike I'm doing in my YouTube playthrough. So it doesn't technically end the run, but we have decided it will end the run for us. So this is uh, to keep me honest. All right. No, yeah, we, we can still warp uh, to the next platform, but this is, this is our self-imposed uh, restriction, I guess. Alright. Okay, so we are starting to run out of ammo here. Alright, we have Steel Axe, man. Now we can actually chop double speed. And deconstruct double speed, most importantly. We're gonna get another level, that's only 50%. So the original one just flat out doubles your mining speed. The warp technologies just give you an additional 50% bonus on top of that. So it's going to have a, a lot less effect. Basically, it also like stacks additionally, not multiply, multiply, <laughs> So this only gives us a, a practical increase of 25% mining speed, but you can research like 10 levels of the of the stuff. So after this, we can research level two, another 50% mining speed, and so on. So in the end, we can really deconstruct really fast. I think it's worth it to go for it. Actually, now that I calculated that it's only 25%, I'm not entirely sure it's actually worth it. Okay, just trying to see how much ammo. Oh, that is big attacks, man. Yeah, I think we need to get out of here. I don't think I will be able to get through all these technologies before I get overwhelmed. I don't have military 2 yet, so I also don't have the option to make grenades. Alright, we're still not at the level of last. Okay, the biter spawner though. Uh, biter spawners are absorbing a lot. <sighs> should I stay or should I go? I'm going to try to make it, we'll see. That's probably a bad plan. So that's, the, that's another benefit, right, of the increased uh, damage of the gun turrets. Three shots per biter also means they kill them three times as fast. Get five more cycles, one more minute, come on guy. One more minute, then deconstruct everything and head out. <laughs> Can we make that? I'm st still quite unsure of that. No, the platform is not physically destroyed. We're just pretending. We're just pretending it is. <laughs> Take ammo on you. Right. Production 2, then it's heavy armor. If I could get that researched as well, that would be great. Could try to squeeze in logistics after that. I think I have the science for that. These are starting to run out though. Yeah, I'm too late. I need to get out, man. I need to get out. Get out! I don't want to get out. I want my heavy armor. Looks like six gunters can do it. 
Oh, these are starting to run out as well. I have to pay the cost. I don't have any other ways to get rid of them. Alright. These are done. The heavy armor is done. I don't care about logistics. I think we already pushed it way too far. Okay, I do care about logistics, apparently. I'm just pushing my luck now. How is the platform doing? Not great. Three gun turrets are out. Uh, I think we, we are fine. I don't have enough science packs even to finish logistics. That's my fail. Of course, I need to deconstruct every single power pole. <laughs> yeah, I pushed it way too thin. Let's push the button. That is not recommended. <laughs> Holy moly. I hope I have enough ammo to stave off the biters for 20 more seconds. Right, let's save. Okay, there's a lot of biters coming still. 12 seconds to warp. Bite of biter bite. Four groups coming in. I guess we're going to have to spend the ammo. Looks like these guys cannot find it. They were coming to attack my research facility. Here we go. We made it. Holy moly. That's nice. Um, okay, let me check. The random selection of tweaks. Does the world generation or starting evolution level change between maps? No, evolution every time goes back to zero. I do think the evolution increases faster over time, but I'm not completely sure of that. I think the war platform's pollution output increases. Um, the, the rate increases the further you go. And evolution progresses slightly faster because of that. Alright, we are at warp zone 9. So what is my goal for this warp zone? Did I save? Yeah, I did save. Let's see. I'm out of resources. Okay, so I should start mining iron. Which is here. And I guess I should start mining copper as well. Alright, but we got our first selection of damage. So we did 400 signs. We calculated we need about 2,000. I guess we are going to be stuck in this cycle for a while where we just mine resources, then... then um, research some technologies. We got two levels of mining production and now that is going to help a lot with that though. The next important technologies to get are... I would like to unlock the floors, but I think I should first go for that... This one. This one will really allow me to stay a lot longer on each planet by bringing down the amount of bullets to kill a biter uh, to two bullets instead of the current three and the starter four. I think this is the top priority. After that we can start thinking about unlocking um, the different factory floors and the platform upgrades. So making the, the starter war platform bigger and getting the different factory floors in there. Yeah, I think that's going to be the plan. I will, I will load that safe. Alright. So we do have a bunch of coal, so that's good. We can stop Z inputting in that case. We can basically just uh, insert half stacks. 
at least in the miners I don't have any additional ammo just input half sex in the furnaces as well just to speed things up oh yeah that is fast oh that is so nice oh that is so fast that's a lot better I need to make ammo. It would be very nice to have uh, the factory floor available and the power generation so I could use my assemblers on every warp zone to easily make some stuff. But we are going to have to live with not being able to do that just yet. I'll just quickly set up more coal because it's quick and easy to do. We can just deconstruct these for for copper later on. Yeah, yeah the reactor is uh, superheated to 1000 degrees so it will basically explode like a nuclear bomb if it is destroyed by the biters. It's our loss condition indeed. We also started with that thing, so we didn't have any grace period from the very start of the game. Which is why we are barely an hour in and already on warp zone 9. We had like minutes. Like literally like uh, 3 minutes or so before we needed to warp away from the first warp zone. I do have 8 more gun turrets. And we are making some ammo now, so I can afford to put these in copper. Let's get out half of that. A little bit optimistic about my coal. Right, so now we can see that almost exactly when the plate finishes, a new ore will pop in there. So the speed is almost the same. This thing is now operating at 96% the speed of the furnace. Whereas before it was operating at 80% I think without the upgrade. So we basically get a 20% boost to our mining speed by researching those two upgrades. For no additional cost except the extra coal it costs to smelt the plates. Okay, so we are getting up to a thousand iron already. We're just gonna keep making more ammo for now. I don't have space anyway to put walls yet on my platform, or I would have to deconstruct those as well every warp zone, which I don't don't really want to do. So I guess let's make a chest with the stuff I need to set up research. I can just uh, grab this from my chest whenever I want to make the research stuff. I think we need uh, more furnaces still as well. Right. It doesn't seem like we have bite attacks yet, already five minutes in now in this world. So I disabled all graphs except the biter and spitter spawner. So as soon as there's a graph here, we know that there is uh, biters are being polluted. But so far we are not being polluted just yet. I'm just going to do this for out of curiosity once. Just exploring the map for a bit, just also so for you to see. 
So this is our current pollution cloud. Okay, we are about to start polluting writers. But uh, we seem to have some different settings going on on these types of planets. Perhaps we have a larger starting area or something. Can we... Do I still have the command to reveal more map? Somewhere in here. Ah yeah, we do. Right. Alright, here's a warp loot chest. It contains stuff like steam engines, bells, assemblers, iron plates, ammo. Basically, most of the stuff you have unlocked. Right, yeah, it looks like we have a large starting area on these types of planets. The You prospect your surroundings and gaze at the stars and wonder if this world ever had a name. It looks like this area is cleared and then you get basically hit from all sides simultaneously. So yeah, we don't have that much time. We are going to get attacks uh, soon. So that's how this kind of world looks. It's interesting to know. Yeah, perhaps I should do some stone mining. Though... I think the gun turrets themselves are powerful enough to keep the biters at bay. And if the gun turrets run out, they will break in in seconds anyway. Alright, so actually quite a calm world. I don't have more miners either. Maybe I should make some more miners. How many do I have in total? I guess at some point we're going to go to... Towards... Um, electric mining, but not just quite yet. Alright, so I have 64. Let's make up to 100. Six, uh, no, not this one. 65 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then the rest into stone furnaces. So mine one single stone so we can get rid of that from our inventory. Alright, I have a full 200 magazines right now. I guess this is going to be in the line of fire first. I guess we're just gonna gather resources until we start getting attacked. And I bet on the next world we already have enough resources to do another science session again. And we can get ourselves the second bullet upgrade and hopefully get a start on... On going uh, downstairs on this platform, man. I, I want to... I want to automate this defense around here, because this what I have now is the most flimsy kind of defense you can have. A couple gun turrets with just a couple ammo inside. Like that can be destroyed in a minute, just by starving the gun turrets out of ammo and just destroying the entire platform. Okay, we're starting to get attacks. Look at the pollution graph now. Just just started to go up again. A sizable fighter stuff is happening. Okay, we have two chests of coal about with including this. We can deconstruct quite speedily now, so this would take like a, a long time to deconstruct. It's like probably like two or three minutes of just pure deconstructing time. But now we can do it in in a minute or so. So we don't need to anticipate the moment of departure from this planet that precisely this time. Okay, there was an error connecting to Twitch. My stream is still up. One, <laughs> 105 viewers. Uh, well, hello everybody. <laughs> That is a new record, I imagine. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been this high before. Well, welcome everybody to the stream. I hope you are enjoying my suffering <laughs> on this uh, unnecessarily complicated Warptorio run with the nuclear reactor on top of, of there. 
So basically, in a normal warp tour you run, you could just be, you would basically still be cheesing unintentionally. Like it's intended game design that you don't need to uh, defend the platform from the first second like we are doing right now. But this is just for me to pay my debts of my YouTube playthrough of Warptorio, where I basically cheese the entire game by ignoring the platform exists. This is my, how to call this, like this religious payback or something. I, I, I don't know the word for that. This is my, my punishment for abusing the cheese, the cheesy game mechanics that allows me to do that. Penance, karma. Okay, I think we're gonna be deconstructing. I think the price of defense is gonna increase too quickly now to be worth it to stay longer on this planet. Retribution. Is it also like this? Repent? You also always see this in those movies. Repent! But I don't actually know what repent means, so... Alright. So, the faster deconstruction speed also helps in quickly getting rid of the gun turrets before the next attack rolls in, instead of being stuck with one or two gun turrets and a giant biter group rolls in. That could be quite bad. Boete doen. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's the Dutch term. Okay, let's, let's uh, let the iron just go a little bit uh, longer. I guess we should be just handcrafting more ammo at this point. Okay, most of my gun turrets here are run out. So this is the biggest danger. Suddenly all your gun turrets run out. And then the biters just demolish everything in very quick succession. Yeah, this is why it is starting to become too expensive to stay. We are, we are leaving. I've had it with this warp zone. <laughs> well, so far actually <laughs> it's going quite well. I had imagined we would need several restarts, but Unfortunately, the playthrough is still quite calm. Not much is happening. Yeah, like this, you know. If this happens when your deconstruction speed is too low, you're basically toast. Alright, that was it for this one. Warp Zone 9C. Time to warp out. Still 6% evolution. But yeah, the problem is the sheer amount of biters coming to attack us. See if we can quickly smell this single iron. Waste one coal. Let's just watch this. Yeah, it's getting expensive real quick, isn't it? Uh, we still need to spend the ammo to kill these guys. Uh, but not these guys, or these guys, or these guys. Yeah. Oh, again, a water planet. Alright. And this time we have some resources to work with. Uh, let me actually just quickly put that in here and we can cancel all of this. What do we have? 3200 iron. Okay, we have 4000 iron and we have we can do the full two, 2000 units of red signs on this planet. If I don't waste too much time. Okay, that is a that is great actually. That is a good timing to get on this rest planet. Alright, so I guess we can just deconstruct these, since we won't be needing them on here. And by the time we get back here, we will have a bigger war platform and hopefully some factory floors as well. Alright. So for those of you just tuning in, this, uh, this uh, world is uh, basically a small island with just water, no resources, not even rocks. But also no biters, so you have some time to organize your base every now and then. Though it is quite random, it is purely random. You don't get one every five warp zones or something. They are just... Uh, sometimes you don't get them for like 20 warp zones, sometimes you get them in a row. It's just uh, quite random. 
All right, so I guess we are going to do this. I'm not sure four of this engine is going to be enough. Should have grabbed at least some of this iron and copper, I guess. Alright, let's make four more of those. We're also going to make some green signs in that case. So we have 10 minutes extra on this warp zone. We can unlock that by doing uh, this technology. There's 50 green science packs and we get another 10 minutes, which will be applied to this world as well. All right. So now I can kind of do this easily instead of, or at, at, at peace. At ease. <laughs> at ease or at peace? <laughs> I guess at ease. Alright. I'm even going to OCD the power lines. Because later there's gonna be laps and stuff. Right, so do we time for do we have time for a hundred? Science packs per assembler. That's going to be 1000 seconds. That is going to be 15, like 17 minutes or so. Okay, I think we do have time for 100 science packs per assembler. We have 24 laps. I could go like 12 wide. I think I should go 8 wide. We're going to make 1600 signs. Maybe plus a little bit more. I don't know. That's uh, 1600 signs is good for 8 assemblers, rather than 12. Okay, we grab the copper and we can start making the signs. I think we have no problem spending all the resources in this time frame. So even without getting the upgrade, perhaps it's not even needed. Alright, so do red signs. Wait, this is only 800. We need one more. We need one more batch of that stuff. We don't have enough iron plates. We need more. Yeah, we're gonna need 16 assemblers. Of iron gears. Alright. We can start setting up the labs. I think we have enough laps for this. We don't need... I don't think there's technologies yet which are longer than 30 seconds for science spec to research. We will focus on ammo production again. Um, not on this world. We'll just mine iron on the next world and immediately start ammo production there. <sighs> this <laughs> this feels nice, man. <laughs> Calm down. Don't have to worry about biters. Don't have to stress. I have plenty of time to spend all my resources. Alright. So now we're gonna make red signs. We have 16 stacks of this stuff. Oh, maybe we do need more laps actually, because we're gonna have two rows of this. Right, let me make eight more laps, but not with my. I need more chests. Not with my just nicely made gears. I'm just gonna handcraft that slowly. Okay, it's not quite enough, but I guess it's enough for what I want to do. It's also everything that fits here. Of course, of course I didn't plan ahead again. What else is new? Okay, put all of that in there. Yeah, I forgot we're gonna have 16 science assemblers instead of... Instead of eight, 
so we would also need 48 laps to keep up. Let's get science started first, that's going to be the bottleneck. Perhaps not. Perhaps uh, research is going to be the bottleneck because now we have the not enough laps. Pro probably I should select a new technology then. You would imagine. Alright, so let's first do something slow. Like these are fast, five seconds, but we don't have a lot of that. I think we just first do these uh, projectile rounds, maybe. I mean, uh, let's uh, let's first go to kind of this kind of make up mind. No, let's first do a slow technology that will allow us to build up the some backlog. It doesn't need to be war projectile rounds though. Let's see how big the platform gets after a single upgrade. We should get access to some downstairs stuff as well. Or there should become space available to go downstairs. Alright, 100 units of science to go through. Once it's all up and running, and if I don't have anything for to do, I will just speed up the game. Like, uh, I have this mod installed where I can just speed up the game, or slow it down. It's <laughs> so we won't have to watch this for 20 minutes if we decide to not do anything, uh, if we can't do anything else at the moment. Alright, this is the first upgrade. So we still cannot automate gun turrets here, because we cannot... No, act technically we could. I think we'll research the other red one as well though. The platform upgrade number two. And the warp factory floor. The warp factory floor will spawn a teleporter gate in here. Pro tip, do not build on hazard concrete. And don't put your expensive stuff in there, because it will despawn once you research a technology and something spawns in on the platform. And there goes your chests of blue chips. This should be fine though. It's on the edge, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> See if I fall for my own stuff. I could smell some iron. This is all supplied. So this is... Uh, gonna be 50 steel, which is what we need to make the heavy armor. Together with 100 copper, so let's throw this one in the water. Ish. Alright, now we've got our laps up and running. These are 20 second technologies, so that actually matches up with this amount of laps and this amount of assemblers. Okay, let's, uh, let's go stand on the platform as it expands. Finally, we get to play some Relaxed warp to you. Ah yeah, 32 laps, you're, you're right. Oh yeah, it is 32, but I just don't have the space and the time to make those laps. I don't have enough iron to make 16 more laps. And I probably will need some iron for some other purpose as well. Ah oh yeah, two yeah, let's get rid of those, that's a good point. Alright, this is big enough so that we can automate some defense. I guess we can start work on designing that. I think I'm still not going to go with a wall on this. Okay, so how much would fit? If we would like leave ourselves an opening, right? We could do this. We could walk out between here. Most of the attacks are coming in from the angles anyway. Which means this is not great. I probably should do it like this. So the corner is not so sharp. 
this turret will get destroyed very easily by spitters and by fighters. There's a lot of surface to attack and these are all going to become come in range later. So they can get more distance close to this turret before these activate. Probably should research stuff instead of speaking. Alright. So what do we... Okay, let's go check out the factory floor. This is our factory floor. Not really big right now. There's more hazard concrete. Here's going to be another teleporter down to the harvester floor. We need electronics and fast and solder for that. And we can get to the harvester floor. And then we can also unlock our mining platforms. Which we cannot do right now because yeah, green signs. We, do, we just don't have green signs un unlocked just yet. We won't have to... We won't be able to make enough uh, to make enough signs to unlock that. Green signs is like almost four times the price of red signs. No, that's not right. Sorry, that's not right. It's like slightly more. It's like 2.33 times the price. It costs seven, seven plates. Am I going crazy? Three plates to make this and seven plates to make green signs here. Yeah. Alright. So then do we actually need to go down just yet if we... Yeah, I guess we can put... Um, we can make a bunch of pipes and put the power plant inside. Then we could have assemblers running inside our factory just to make some stuff. We don't have fluid handling just yet, but we can place some pipes. Since we don't actually have a factory to power. Pipes will have enough storage capacity for water. To just power like a handful of ensemblers making some stuff some of the time. So let's do research down. Alright. How much gun turret is this? 40. Okay, I have only 36 at the moment. I guess we can maybe do this for now. Now let's just keep it here. Uh, going to be running a belt around, I imagine, so that the turrets can be supplied automatically. Alright, we also need then a bunch of inserters. Guess this has to be like this. How do the power lines match up? I guess like this. One tile of space between every power line. And this power is then also going to come from the boiler room, which is going to be... Which is going to be all the way down here. Two more floors down. Okay, we're going to need a bunch of pipes. Okay, 1000... Automation signs. We still have not made the first logistics signs back yet. I think I am going to make 20 logistics signs packs. Let's make 22. Looks like we'll be doing that by hand. We can make the heavy armor now. Okay, we're going. <laughs> we're Doing 6 billion things at the same time, but that's alright. Boiler floor does not require anything else. We do need to keep some iron to make a bunch of pipes though. Guess let's go with this many for now. <laughs> I think we'll actually... We will still hand supply this for the beginning. I think I'll just manually place six gun turrets per corner for now. This problem is, uh, the problem is I won't have any gun turrets left over to defend my mines if I do this. So let's just go with four. Okay, these still cover this area. It is not great actually. 
Perhaps I should be building these instead. No, I, I don't know. Let's just go like this. I think it'll be alright. We can make some gun turrets early on, next war zone, as well as the ammo. We can then fill in this entire thing which we are trying to make. Alright, so this has to be here then, because the other one is not powered. And then we can just rotate this for the other three ones. Alright. That's gonna be our defense. Oh yeah, power is out. And that means coal is out, basically. Of course, wasting time like this. Always a great idea. Okay, I will need to research uh, logistics science packs. I'm gonna actually do that first. It's gonna be super fast. This has a five second technology again, and all the labs are busy. We have a backlog of 10 science packs in every assembler already. Alright, so now I can get 20... I just like to make a couple extra in case of rounding errors and stuff. Let's work on getting some of this filled in. At least the stuff we have. Alright, that's the boiler floor. What other important stuff do we want? I think the next one is just going to be... The damage upgrade. I really, really, really want that damage upgrade. And we can research military too after, once the... Um, once uh, the damage upgrade is complete, we can research military too. That unlocks grenades, which allows us to explode big groups of biters without spending ammo. And it unlocks red ammo, which is not that important, but we can... It has several uses which we can exploit. First of all, we can find red ammo in loot chests in not small quantities, so that is good. It's a requirement for military science later on as well, red, uh, the red magazines. So we can find those for free, basically. It's another reason to make walls though, we also need a lot of walls for military signs. And the other thing is, we can put some red ammo in our gun, so the yellow ammo can actually stay in our inventory and I can access it from my hotbar to fill turrets and stuff. Because now, every time if I have some ammo in here, it just goes back in here. And only if I have more than 200 ammo, then uh, I can actually access ammo from my hotbar. Now I need to take it out of my gun every single time, so that is not great. Alright, that's an absolutely minimal amount of ammo I'm putting in my um, Actually I can just make a chest wall around it. Let's do that. chest wall around my reactor. That's uh, maybe a good idea. <laughs> 120 views. Oh, thanks for the subscription on uh, Prime or True Prime uh, DVZR. <laughs> I think Twitch Partner is quite hard to get. You have to not only get the amount of viewers. I think you have like have like uh, an average of 90 viewers, so not like these top moments. Like we have 140, what the, what the heck is going on? Yeah, but next to the viewers you need to have... Um, uh, you need to stream like 12 days in the month, I think. And currently I'm mostly only streaming once a weekend with sometimes a little bit extra and 
Oh yeah, YouTube is my main gig. So with the with the edited videos and so. All right. Let's enjoy the calmness for a moment. The beautiful glow in the night of the labs and the reactor, the superheated nuclear reactor about to explode at any moment of inattentiveness. <laughs> it does add a nice uh, touch to the playthrough. <laughs> it was a good idea. Yeah, I think Twitch Partner also looks back over the last three months or so. So Twitch Affiliate, which I have now, basically is as soon as you have... I forgot the number. You don't need to have that many viewers to get Twitch Affiliate uh, status. And you just get it upon basically reaching it for the first time. But Partner, they look back over the last or three months I think and you need to basically if you go partner that's basically like a full-time thing almost I would say you need to spend a lot of time doing it what mod gives such a building uh, editor mode basically we went into uh, editor mode and we just placed it there ourselves and put two fuel cells in it to heat it up to the maximum temperature. All right, we've got it. Projectile rounds is finished. I guess we can go military too now. If only we had the military science packs inside. And that should allow us to make some grenades. I guess I'm going to make a couple just to get some. Yeah, this is like the, the polar opposite of the YouTube playthrough, where we basically play, play Warptoria normally. And uh, we, we, force ourselves, we force ourselves to deal with the attacks on the platform from the very first second of the game, basically. Alright, how much do I have left, actually? 20-ish per thing, times 16. 300, let's say 400 signs is left. 400 red signs is left. We could upgrade the size of the factory floor, which is something we have to do. Uh, not too late. We also could just save those science packs to put towards like like the harvest, the mining platforms and stuff. Uh, this is like a 10% movement speed increase, which is nice, but necessary, I don't know. Perhaps we can wait until we have actual, until we actually have uh, some automated signs set up. I think the Warptorio teleporter gate is a good thing to have though. So let's research that. Let's research that first. Warp reach, we can reach further. That actually is pretty nice because in this mod you are quite stuck between a lot of stuff all of the time. So having the extra reach to take out the sign spec from that thing can be quite nice. Alright, the teleporter gate is gonna spawn in on the south end of the platform. Let's see if it actually spawns on my ghosts. So normally it does not spawn on your structures but somewhere else. Alright, it does not care about your tile goes so so we can grab this thing i'll just throw it on the floor for now you can put it we can put it in the chest for now because every time we upgrade something like this uh, a new one will spawn if there is no one and if you place it somewhere it will it will recall that structure that is pretty annoying in warptorio Okay, we're gonna get another one. I'm just going to save a couple copies, because if it gets destroyed by biters, then you lose it for that warp zone. And you can only have one, but we can abuse that a little bit. You cannot, you cannot uh, mine this structure to get a new one, which some people have commented about. 
it only applies to the uh, mining platforms. All right, the, that, that actually requires a lot of green signs. Okay, factory floor. I guess we get the second level of warp X speed. Could get ourselves the toolbar. Let's do optics. Let's do get. Let's do get warp reach. The thing is, this messes up your uh, instincts for other factorial playthroughs because you 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 get used really quickly to being to reach further. So that's <laughs> that's kind of why I don't want to research it. But I guess let's do it. Oh hey, Mr. Combs, happened to catch a comment at the right time this time. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, we have the boiler room. Let's um, let's go take a look. Probably should be filling that with water. Do we have res I have resources for fifty science packs. I could research the second upgrade. I think I'll do that. Will I be fast enough handcrafting that though? That's a good question. <laughs> Let's see, 50 seconds. Raw 8.7 seconds times 50. Like six minutes or so. I think we should get this done approximately exactly in time. Alright, we connect all of these. So this is the harvester floor. Not much to do here just yet. This will spawn like long hallways where we can smelt ore with a mining platform attached to the end of it, which you can place somewhere in the world. This is our boiler floor. I promised a blue. I promised uh, without blueprints, so we'll do it without blueprints. <gasps> no, we cannot yet. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, this is a red technology. Yeah, we need that. We need that definitely. Yeah, we need it much more than the other things. This will spawn a pipe and uh, a belt. So we can actually transport uh, stuff between floors. Oh, this was a bad idea, actually. Yeah, it's a bad idea. Stop this. Stop this immediately. I think that's a bad idea. We need the uh, pipes to be able to fill our... Uh, need pipes to fill the boiler room with water. It costs a lot of iron. This is just, this is, okay, here it comes, the, so these bells connect to downstairs, so if you put stuff in this chest, it ends up in this chest over here. And that way you can transport resources further down. And also these pipes, they can do that, so we need a bunch of these undergrounds. Let's uh, start from the bottom. All right. Uh, so let's just lay out some pipes up here, basically. Now we just need to connect this guy. To the boilers. Um, yeah, let's use underground. I know I have uh, I have warp X speed a lot. 
resume that. So I don't know how much science packs I still have. We could start uh, deconstructing already. Just using these because they are cheaper. Alright. I guess yeah, we will try to... We have another one of these now. Let's put that in the chest as well. I'm kind of a mess again all over the place. I, I, I didn't showcase yet how that works actually. Basically, you, you can place this anywhere in the world and just warp back to the platform. So that's uh, that's quite a nice feature. You can go exploring and just uh, get back without um, without having to drive all the way back. Let's actually see if we are getting water in here. Kind of. Huh? Okay, we do have water in here. We kind of have to start deconstructing soon. Okay, let's not waste everything. It's gonna fill up very quickly. Still 15 in here, 18 in here. Let me just manually distribute that. And we can start deconstructing. I don't think we have time to eat up all the signs. Three minutes. Okay, now we get an extra level of inventory space from this guy. Any day now. Okay, there it is. Nice. Um, I guess we could do the movement. The movement speed bonus. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Major Mayhem, for the five gifted subs. I keep just blowing through these goals, man. I I think I started with like, I, I, just cannot, I just cannot fathom this man, it's just... It's, it's... Thanks, uh, thanks a bunch, thanks a lot man. I really appreciate it even though I I am so awkward around all this stuff. Alright, so now we just have to hope that this technology completes before we lose all our laps on this world. Can we calculate that? 20 seconds for science pack we have about... I don't think I can calculate this before it's gone. Okay, let's see. It's on 50%, so 75 science packs, 20 seconds. We have uh, 32 laps. 64. So every lap has to research 3 science packs, that's one minute of research. It's quite close. Cutting it quite close. Are we still pumping a lot of water? I think we can deconstruct this pipe already. Yeah, I'm by far I'm by far not so fast yet with deconstructing as I think I am, so Nervously walking around. There's, there is nothing else fast to research, I don't think. No. Okay, we're gonna. Yeah, we can deconstruct this already. And run on the remaining steam of these engines. Alright, we're good to go. Let's, let's head out of here. 
Wow, that was a useful world, man. That was a useful warp zone. Okay, 45 seconds left. Uh, let's save. Then Z. Alright, now we can start building the boilers and stuff. I have a uh, hundred fish already. So I will reload this point uh, later on. I'm, I will take a break before we continue with the next world. We achieved quite a bit. We can now... We have 20,000 units of water, so it's still less than one storage tank, actually. We can build our uh, power plant here. And power it up to power all of this stuff. And then we can actually have some assemblers in this area here. Where we can just make ammo. For science, we can do the science production here. We can we can even fit our labs in here. I mean, there's not much space to make it automated yet, but we don't really need automated just yet. We are still fine hand feeding. So we can actually do another 100 red science pack technology inside the base over here. Um. What is what even is your naming convention for the safes? All right, so <laughs> yeah, it's quite oh zero zero ten. I made it. Yeah, well, <laughs> it should be zero ten. So the the number is the the warp zone. Then A is when we arrive. Uh, Z is before warping out, and all the rest in between is um, like safety saves or if I want to showcase something. <laughs> oh. I accidentally pushed uh, the E button to confirm. So, and I don't want to take a break when there's 130 viewers, but I guess I, I will. I will take a break anyway. Okay, so I have a nice idea for my break. Um, I don't know if most of you are watching the YouTube series as well. Uh, if you are on Patreon, the next. Uh, the next video is already up, but I think I can maybe get away with playing the next episode of my Warptorio run, the, the cheesy one, which is not yet on YouTube. I can just play it in the break for those of you who, are here, who took the effort to uh, join me on the stream. <laughs> Yeah, actually it surprises me how many people, uh, uh, how few people leave during the breaks. But yeah, just uh, just like a thank you back to everybody here. Um, I'll, I will give you the sneak preview of the of next week's episode, uh, broadcasted live here on Twitch. If I can get it, I it just comes to mind right now, so I don't have this set up. So let me see if I can find my uh, my final version of the video I don't know should I do the full thing guess I can in warp zone 4 we build up all three of our factory floors oh is that hearable already actually okay yeah, I still should I still should do the Patreon link, I guess. Yeah, I, I'll contact you, uh, Macha, to to set that up because I think I should probably do do something some more professional stuff around here, like moderation and all that stuff. Although it it hasn't been necessary just yet. <laughs> uh, everybody's been really nice. Uh, no no bots have really been able to snuck in to sneak in, so. Um, right, let me see if I can. All right. In Warp Zone 4, we build up all three of our factory floors. 
just to just to verify that does play with sound right okay can somebody confirm is, is it visible and does it play with sound? Finally making the transition from burner miners and quickly thrown together temporary outdoor research bases sound, no image. to a well-designed indoor factory. Finally following the... Yeah, uh, okay, so why is there... Okay, now the screen is white. Black VLC. Okay, I see the status bar, but I do not see the game design. We've got the boiler basement responsible for power with an inbuilt water and coal storage. We've got the two mining platforms supplying the harvester right. floor. Okay, this is a little bit dangerous, but I guess I could just do a screen capture instead of trying to get that source going. Like this one maybe. In no, it's still white, isn't it? Yeah, it's still white. Okay, what if I just close it? In warp zone four, we build up all three of our factory floors. Okay, let's just I, I'll just keep it playing in the background for now. So I can try to get it on the outdoor research basis on the screen. A well designed indoor factory. Finally following the intended game design. We've got the boiler basement responsible for power with an inbuilt water and coal storage. Right, that is not working. We've got the two mining platforms supplying the harvester floor, which has two lanes of multi-use smelting lines, each of which can process iron, copper or coal without any reconfiguring. With its 18 chest plate storage located near the central teleporter, <laughs> We can easily bulk transfer the required plates up to the warp factory floor, where our 20 labs are trying their hardest to keep up with over 60 SP. Alright, I'll try, I'll try one more option. I'll try capturing it on YouTube itself. I don't know if, if my connection can handle that though, because then I'll be <laughs> downloading my video from YouTube and uploading it again to Twitch. Go to YouTube. Yeah, sh probably doing this stuff in the last moment is not the best idea. Okay, let's let's see. In warp zone four. If I now select the window of YouTube, final. Okay, let's just close that. Okay. <laughs> I already could have finished my break by now. Window capture. All right, that works. Okay, I got it. All right, so that also will function then as the countdown timer. It looks like it will be a t t 25 minute break. That's a long break though. Uh, let's just play it. We'll see how far it goes. Okay, so this is the the early access of the new video which is about to come out next Friday. It's on Patreon now and I'll now play it on Twitch in the break. So if you don't want to watch it, then just go do something else. I will play this in the background. I'm going to grab a bite to eat and a drink and a toiletry break <laughs> and I'll be back.
in 20 to 25 ish minutes so enjoy the video guys We build up all three of our factory floors, finally making the transition from burner miners and quickly thrown together temporary outdoor research bases to a well-designed indoor factory, finally following the intended game design. We've got the boiler basement responsible for power with an inbuilt water and coal storage. We've got the two mining platforms supplying the harvester floor which has two lanes of multi-use smelting lines, each of which can process iron, copper or didn't coal work, without <laughs> any reconfiguring. With its 18 heck? chest plate storage located near the central teleporter, we can easily bulk transfer the required plates up to the warp factory floor, where our 20 labs are trying their hardest to keep up with over 60 SPM of science production. Now it's just going to be a matter of trying to mine the right resources at the right time, so we can keep supplying copper and iron to science production, while simultaneously trying to not run out of coal or water, to prevent power blackouts and running out of furnace fuel. Welcome yeah. to Warp Zone 5. Welcome to Warp Zone 5. That was a recap anyway. This is how it looks when you don't defend your platform. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. Upon arriving in a new warp zone, we are obviously not gathering any resources just yet, so that's going to be top priority. But even topper priority, we still have one more batch of 4000 plates available, so we first distribute those to the science assemblers to keep research production going while we are out scouting for distant resources. Each set of 4000 plates will be turned into 400 pairs of red and green signs in under 6 minutes. So including the 4 minutes of production still left over from last warp zone, we have but 10 minutes to go out, explore the world, find and mine iron and show up at the science area with a fresh new batch of the stuff, ideally in under 10 minutes sharp. So we grab our stuff and quickly poke our head outside briefly. To ensure the biter masses warping along with the platform are gone. And they are. It usually takes them anywhere between 10 seconds to a minute to find a local nest to join or to get lost and despawn. Of course I forgot to take coal, so we chop down a fuel rock next to the platform and get going. Despite having a small grace period before the attacks start mounting up again, we are not even going to look at the home ore patches. While that would give us a quick boost of iron, it just takes too much time to move the platforms around multiple times per warp zone. We are going straight out to distant locations, where we can plop down the mining platforms and build up its surrounding defense and keep it there for hopefully the entire time period we have on this warp zone. We want to go out far enough so the warp platforms pollution cloud won't catch up to our mining platforms, but we cannot go too far out, as the biter base size and density increases with distance from spawn. Not only would we eventually be physically blocked by the sheer amount of biter bases, it also becomes less and less likely that any resource patch found has enough biter free space around it to not attack attacks. <laughs> to not attract attacks based on pure proximity. And at those distances, we cannot simply remove the nests, as the big and behemoth worms are basically indestructible at our level of technology. Eventually, we find our first copper patch. It is located perfectly, but we don't take it. Yet. We still have chests full of copper in the base, and each chest of copper needs to be matched with three chests of iron. So yeah, we are going to want to build the iron mining platform first. Well, I'd say these crappy loot loot chests could now actually be hurting me more than helping me, taking up precious time, all during which our smelters remain idle. Thank you. 
The RNG factor in finding biter-free patches of resources of the type you need is definitely a thing. And it's taking me a long time to find... Well, anything really, let alone iron. Fortunately, this planet has been reasonably kind to us exploration-wise, as this is the first time I need to carry my car through the forest. And we spot a patch of coal in the process. Well, by this point I'm starting to feel desperate, hungry for any resource. So, let's start taking it. Especially because there's also a nearby water source we can claim to top off our water buffer tanks. Throughout my practice sessions I have learned that it's a good habit to go look inside to verify everything is working correctly. As it happens too often that something is stuck, blocking something, disconnected or rotated somehow. This time though we can see the coal flowing nicely past the copper furnaces, through the splitters and into the boiler basement. We also quickly check if the water level in the system indeed is rising. The grand plan is to mine coal for as long as our copper reserves last, before making the switch from coal to copper. Anyway, did I mention if we forget to place those 4 extra bells which don't fit on the mining platform that half of the miners are out of commission? And yeah, perhaps leaving before placing any gun turrets to defend against the friendly biters next door also would have been a bit premature. The grand plan is to mine iron all warp zone long. Or at least that was the plan, as it's over 7 minutes in on this warp zone and we have found giant resource patches of all kinds except for iron. On and on and on we go, finding a truly laughable amount of non-iron resource patches, before we find yet another lucky loot chest. Again, not for the loot, but for actually discovering an iron patch in the process. But will it be free of biters? Somehow it is, even though we are much farther away from our war platform than I ever intended to go. We quickly build up the platform, not forgetting to place the all important 4 extra belts and defend it with gun turrets again. That concludes our business outside for a while, so before popping in to see if everything works alright, we first make a quick exploration loop. And boy, the surroundings are littered with giant biter bases, which somehow have avoided spoiling the iron patch for us. Well, we'll take it. And despite it taking forever to find this iron patch, somehow we still got it done in under 10 minutes. Nice. So we quickly pop inside and iron smelting indeed seems to be working fine. We have almost completed mining productivity 10 and you can see we almost have the full furnace tech at work now. By now the 10 minute mark has passed though and indeed the iron chest for belts is already empty. The inserter production is still slightly suboptimal due to inserter speed limits which we'll address shortly. First we somehow scrounge together 3000 iron and refill our science operation just in time so it keeps operating without any hiccups. Whoa, that was close, nice job man. Well, mining productivity 10 has finished 
which means the resource acquisition has caught up to its intended pace. So now it's time to get the resource processing up to its intended pace as well. So let's first address that inserter speed problem I just mentioned. The next warp technology gives all of our inserters an extra carrying capacity, meaning they'll pick up two items per swing instead of one. Currently our iron gear production is limited by the inserter speed. Even the blue inserter cannot insert iron fast enough to keep the assembler running at all times. The green chip production is also not up to speed, but that's not due to the inserters. A single copper wire assembler simply cannot produce enough copper wire by itself to satisfy a hungry green chip assembler. Anyway, the last bottleneck is the limited amount of laps we can place, so we research the first two levels of lap research speed. Which makes our 20 laps as fast as 30 so we can hopefully make a dent in the backlog of produced science packs. The inserter technology costs only red science again, 150 packs, so we supply the red science to compensate. We collect all our copper to see where we're at, and we discover we still have over two full chests in total, so we need to mine like 20,000 iron before we spend all our copper. At 900 iron a minute, that's over 20 minutes of iron production left to go. Also the coal storage will benefit from the inserter technology, as without the upgrade, these four inserters simply cannot keep up emptying a full yellow belt of coal just yet. Fortunately, coal production hasn't slowed down just yet because of the wooden chest buffers at the teleporter, but for now we can hand transfer the remaining coal and upgrade the storage to steel chests and with over 5 empty chests available, we can keep the coal flowing in for at least another 15 to 20 minutes. And that's the initial setup of Warp Zone 5 done. We've got a full belt of iron plates and a full belt of coal flowing in for the foreseeable future. Now it is time to focus on the next step of the plan. Extending the warp timer to a full 60 minutes per warp zone. To accomplish that, we need a new type of science pack. Military science. 2 times 50 for the two warp reactor technologies themselves, plus an additional 120 to research the prerequisite technology of rocketry. This is what we mined all that excessive stone for last warp zone. We will need 220 walls to make the 220 military science required. And like always, we want to make just a couple extra to speed things up. We also need 110 red ammo, but conveniently we found already more than that in loot chests. And the last thing we need is 110 grenades, which requires well over a thousand coal. So let's just use our personal assemblers to make some. Yeah, let's just use all of them. Meanwhile, let's collect all the military science ingredients in this chest over here. To make it easy to follow for you, the viewer, we are going to be making 4 sets of 28 pairs, resulting in 224 science packs. Well, at least there's no productivity bonus involved. Alright, we just need to grab 28 more grenades. 29, that's enough. So let's repurpose 4 assemblers to military science. Nice, you know only a true professional would prepare his inventory this well. Let's grab the first column and... Hey wait, where did my 28 red ammo go? Oh, uh, it went in my machine gun. Well, no problem, easy fix, you know. Let's just insert it in the assembler and... No, no, don't! <sighs> well, everything for the presentation, right? It's not like we're in a hurry or anything. 
We wasted a full minute on unnecessary chest shenanigans. Wait, what? I was supposed to cut this out? Anyway, this time we'll do it properly. Ish. Alright, whatever. That's 224 military signs in the making. Let's quickly distract the audience by taking a quick peek outside. All is still good on the iron patch and the giant biter nests are so far away we haven't even started to pollute them yet. Until now the furnaces have been consuming coal unevenly because before mining productivity 10 was in we didn't have a full belt of ore just yet. So let's just give them a refuel to once again put them on the same clock. And indeed commenters, you were right. I forgot to put the ore unblocker 2000 on this side. I have fixed this and some other small issues in my public blueprint book. Which you can find on my discord channel, link in description. Also come on man, you are 6 videos deep in this challenge so subscribe already. Anyway, now that we are mining coal I try to distribute the coal to as many places I can freeing up chest space as much as possible. With the shiny new inserter upgrade researched, now the blue inserters can keep up with a full yellow belt of coal. Anyway, with every furnace filled to the brim with coal, we've still got 4 more chests of coal to fill up. After all those time consuming shenanigans, we probably need to go and resupply red and green signs, and indeed, there's only 36 iron plates left over for the circuits. Annoyingly, we are still nowhere close to having a full 3 chests of iron, so another portion size package it shall be. Anyway, you've seen me do this before, 88446 and that's another 400 science packs supplied. At least we can see, now the iron gear assembler is working continuously. Yeah, never mind me checking the water situation every time and doing water pump management. That's also something I've made obsolete in my public blueprints, and there it just works without micromanaging the pumps. By now the much needed lab research speed 2 is almost done. And after we distribute another set of resources to science, we see that we have already stashed up 200 red signs and 670 green signs. That huge discrepancy is caused by a bunch of Warptorio technologies costing 1 green and 2 red signs per cycle. But that means that our imbalanced science production setup of 81 red signs per minute and 67.5 green signs per minute is actually a good fit for this stage of the game. And the red science count will now slowly catch up to the green science count again. Anyway, our military science packs are almost done, which is good because those are required for the next technologies on the program. Unfortunately, we don't have space for automated belt distribution, so we are going to have to distribute it the Michael Hendricks way. Z inputting 220 science packs one at a time as I blatantly refuse to install the even distribution mod. And with just under 19 minutes remaining in this warp zone, we are ready to extend the warp timer for the second and last time this playthrough. As you see, Warp Reactor Project 4 requires a whole bunch of additional red and green technologies, but since we've got those automated, that won't be any problem. It'll just take some time. The Warp Reactor Projects are 5 seconds per science spec technology, so get ready for an absolute blitz through this one. And just like that, Another 10 minutes have been added to the clock. Nice. A quick check confirms that we still have plenty of copper remaining to keep science going for a while. 
so we can still keep mining more coal. Anyway, by this point I give up on my legally trademarked quadruple chest limited resource distribution system trademark public copyright and I hereby release it alongside Mickey Mouse to the public domain. With red signs so far behind, the chest limits are getting in the way, so we just get rid of them altogether. Hand feeding is joy. Hand feeding is life. Join the cult today. Anyway, military science production is fully completed, so we distribute the last packs to the labs. We haven't really evenly distributed the science, but it doesn't matter much. It's a 5 second technology and we have produced 4 science packs extra, meaning that we don't need to consume every last drop of science to get the upgrade. Anyway, I'm not sure what I should be doing next. So let's take a quick peek outside at the coal mine. We see a reasonably large stack of biter bodies, but so far no damage to our gun turrets. That is likely to change though, as with the 20 extra minutes per warp zone, we are going to get far into big biter territory. And those guys are no joke. Anyway, with this round of science ingredient distribution, the iron chest at Red Science is all the way full. And it will take the base like 20 minutes to jump through it all. All the floors are fully built out as well, so there really isn't much else we can do here. So I decide to go exploring a little. See if we can find a better copper patch, as the one discovered earlier may turn out to be too close to the war platform's pollution cloud in the later stages. We do find a copper patch, but that big worm is within range, and we physically cannot kill him yet, as his armor way outclasses our gun turrets. There is a slight problem with our mining setup. In this configuration, the central miner is outputting at the top half of the belt, which means we've got 9 miners for the top half and only 7 for the bottom half. That leads to the top half having inactive miners, while the bottom half of the belt is not fully full. We implement a hacky solution to solve that by having an inserter pick off ore of the top half and transferring it to the bottom half. That should balance things out and make sure the ore belt is fully compressed on both sides. Anyway, in the playthrough I didn't realize the following yet, so I went to do the same at the coal mining platform. But here we don't need to. The central miner in this orientation outputs on the bottom half of the belt. So that leads to the 8 miners for the top half and 8 miners for the bottom half configuration we actually desire. This of course is also fixed in my public blueprint book, as instead of having one flippable blueprint which I'm using here, each mining platform now has its own blueprint. Anyway. 
the rocketry technology is about to complete, which is the final prerequisite we need. And we need to be careful not to miss the moment, because this is one speedy tech. And after it completes, we now have a full hour of time per warp zone. Big biters, here we come. Next, Next time. time. Hey, that was my line. <laughs> right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. For those who didn't see it yet, I guess a lot of the people watching are on Patreon as well. Since that is where I... The only place I first advertised <laughs> that I was streaming here. <laughs> okay, now I have to switch this back to Factorio somehow. <laughs> kind of a long break. We got raided by Diablo. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that must have been a, a small, a, a strange point to drop into the stream in the middle of a sort of a YouTube-like episode stream on Twitch. In the middle of some series, in the middle of some episode. <laughs> right, um... I need to find my Factorio screen again. Here it is. Okay, we can close this then. So this uh, will be on YouTube uh, Friday. It's currently in early access. I didn't. I did not have a video this week just because. I started when I started the series. I had a few weeks to work ahead, so I had a couple episodes finished already. But that backlog has disappeared in the meantime, especially over Christmas and New Year and stuff. So I usually upload about three times per month, and if I upload in a week, it's always on Friday, on uh, nine o'clock Central uh, Central European time. But yeah, it's not every single week. It uh, depends on if I can get it done and with these longer videos uh, of like up to a half hour those take about 30 hours to make so next to all the other stuff I'm doing it's uh, it's a bit hard to get one done every week anyway um, I th think you already heard enough anyways in the video okay I am back at the Factorio screen Looks like that is all right. So I guess that's better than just a regular break screen. It was a little on the long side though. I was already, I've watched along with you for the last five or six minutes or so. Uh, I think I saved here, right? Yeah, we saved here. So yeah, I forgot kind of what we were doing. We just were on a water world. Look at that pollution. <laughs> That's the pollution cloud after 30 minutes. You cannot see the the land anymore. We were on an island without biters. We got some time to research some stuff. And we got ourselves all the floors. And some water in the boiler room. So now we can actually start building the, the boilers. Something is missing. That is not the, what I wanted to hear from this planet. Okay, it is... Not iron, coal, or copper. So I guess we just accept that and move on. The first thing we do is just mining again. Yeah, we need more gun turrets and we need more ammo. Basically, we want to fill in this uh, this uh, design we just made. And now we have a hundred of these. So let's go ten white. Oh, I forgot to take my coal. I'm kind of rusty. Imagine bite. Yeah, that would be a nice if biters could be the missing resource. Alright, let's grab another one of these guys. I'm just going to grab all the coal. Because we're going to need it for copper as well. We're going to mine hard now. Actually, we can use that thing to just go back to the platform. Can we not? Oh, that's alright.
Okay, let's just get the stop row going. The so first thing we're gonna mine hard for is iron. Because ammo is 100% iron and gun turrets are like 75% iron or something, or 80% iron. Alright. Okay, gun turrets are set up as well. So I guess we can zap back, grab the remaining copper. Nice. <laughs> Actual usage of the teleporter gate. We can set up like a row on copper as well. Okay, I have a feeling we are finally starting to get to the stages where we can spend some actual time per warp zone now. Right. I guess we first just make more ammo. We have a little bit of time. I think we will set up the boilers in the basement. Now that we still can. Because later I want to be above ground. Now we're gonna need some pipes actually. Oh, we have some pipes still. Never mind. Thanks for... What the... What the heck is going on? That was way too many... That is way too many subscriptions, man. My goal is 69, man. <laughs> We're already at double that, looks like, almost. Thanks, uh, thanks a bunch. Oh, yeah, we're going, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of sounds. I have to look, man. I should change this to some sort of factorial-like sound. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks, man, for the 20 gifted subs. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole awkwardness thing again, but yeah, I just, I don't know <laughs> what to say. I really don't know what to say, man. I'm just, I'm just. Yeah, that would be a good sound. I will get, I will get that sorted for next stream. But yeah, thanks a bunch, thanks a bunch for the support, man. It's really appreciated. Okay. So now we just connect this. We have water, we have coal. These things should be making power as soon as we um, put power lines in here. And this thing has an accumulator. Which I cannot show that right now. This thing has an accumulator. The, the different teleporters, they all have accumulators. So once I connect this... It now starts charging up, and that is how all the power gets warped through the different floors and the mining platforms. <sighs> how should I stream like this? <laughs> Thanks, Maja. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just going in ignore mode. Just, uh, it's enough already, please. We're getting attacks. Some turrets are starting to run out. I, I need to focus somehow. Grab the iron. Keep everything going. You cancelled ammo. Yeah, that's what you get from, from do, doing this stuff to me. I start to just run around and click on things instead of thinking what I'm doing. Yeah, blame chat. That's the standard thing to do on Twitch, isn't it? It's 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 your destiny as Twitch chat to be blamed for everything that goes wrong. As far as I understand, that is how it works. Okay, it does not matter how these are laid out. Let's actually start using some of these. Can I do this? I probably cannot. Oh, I can. So this is a very beautiful build, professional level. Oh come on guys. Okay, that's really it's enough already. Stop it already. Anyone else do? I'm just going to ignore. Anyone else do? I'm just going to ignore it. That, that's it. That's enough. Can I <laughs> switch this off? No, no, really, stop it already. I just cannot even follow what's going on anymore. <laughs> Turn off the alerts here. Yeah, it's not about the alerts, it's just about the... Okay, attacks are getting big. I need gun turrets. I need to focus. Now it now it actually starts to be dangerous this playthrough because I'm going to be underground and when you are underground you cannot see what's happening above ground. What 12 more? What 12 more to go? My, my goal was 60, man. 69. That's, that was my goal. There is nothing more to go. Oh, we got some hype train thing. I didn't even mess with those settings either. Oh man, look at the power of these two-shot gun turrets. They just melt the biters now, man. Focus. Just keep going. Nothing is happening. Don't look at... Don't look at the chat. Do it. I can. I can do it. I have just turned all my iron into gears. That is not good. Need also a lot of iron to make gun turrets. You can make gun turrets in here. Alright. This will speed up things considerably. Also going to make bunch load of copper wire so we can make circuits and assemblers faster. Do I still have those? No. We'll get back to those later. Let's see what's happening here. Yeah, powerful. Okay, we need to get this belt thing up and going. One, two, three. Let's make four undergrounds so we can actually bridge these gaps. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, how would that work, right? <laughs> Gift subs, but there are no more viewers to, to sub. Okay. I don't even know where we're at anymore. It's fine. Alright, so yeah, military tech to reduce the number of bullets per biters. Um, it's not going to work further. We already got to 7.8 damage, which kills biters in two shots. The next step to kill biters in one shot is very, very far away. By that time, we'll probably... It's easier to access flamethrower turrets. So we are at peak, at peak power already. Against small biters it is, not against medium biters. Okay, I cannot ignore. Thanks, man. Thanks. Ag oh, again? Thanks for the... I didn't even start this, man. I didn't even start streaming on... I started streaming on Twitch instead of YouTube because it would be a low-pressure environment where there were no stakes for me. Like, when I stream on YouTube, it has to be good, you know, because it is already a subtle thing. This is just... This is just for fun. <laughs> Stop it already. High-pressure chat. <laughs> That's what you get for blaming chat for everything, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm just... Uh, I, I'm just... <laughs> you don't want to know this, just, but I'm... I'm just sweating profoundly now. It's not even warm. I, I, <laughs> I will need to take a shower after stream. I just don't know what to do with this. There's too much information, too much stuff going on, man. Stop it. I'm, I'm really mean it. No, I know streamers all, say this all the time. Oh, stop it, stop it. But really, stop it. Okay, stop it. I'll say this one more time. If anyone who donated a bunch of subs regrets their decision uh, in the coming month, just hit me up on uh, through some way uh, Discord or email. You can find my email address on my YouTube channel and uh, I will refund uh, the portion uh, which goes to me. <sighs> There's still like 50 things <laughs> to go through. <laughs> Don't break the streamer. We still need him. Yeah, I'm going to lose. I'm, I, I sh I'll, I'll make a save. I'm going to lose, man. This is going to go wrong very soon. Um, how can I f focus like this? I mean, how do you enjoy watching this if I constantly have to pause? The ah, <laughs> focus. Click. Focus. Biters. Get mo down. I need gun turrets. I was making gun turrets down here. The gun turrets. See, this is fine. Everything is going as intended. I even am going to set up. I need inserters. I have some already. Okay, we can now make them faster because we finally have some wire. And still some gears. It's starting to sound pretty bad already. I have to take a look at my minus two though. Like, actually, here we are not getting attacked much at all. 50 plates in there. It's part of the fun of Twitch. Don't worry. This is kind of what the hype trains are all about. I don't know if any, if any one of you have ever watched uh, Filza, this uh, Minecraft YouTuber who got famous after he lost his hardcore world uh, five years in... Uh, yeah, he was playing a hardcore world for five years in, streaming on Twitch with like a handful of viewers. Then he died and he just blew, he just blew the F up. <laughs> and I, di I didn't watch uh, Twitch, but I saw the summary videos he did on YouTube. And yeah, <laughs> now I understand how he was feeling, man. I mean, I'm not blowing the F up. I don't think so, at least. <laughs> Maybe I am. <yeah. laughs> but uh, yeah, it just... <laughs> 
uh, yeah, it's just like this. You, you don't know what to say, it's just overwhelming. It's just overwhelming. I have to say it was fun to watch though. <laughs> but yeah, the experience, I guess it's, it's fun in a way. It's fun in a way, but it's also very... I don't know, concerning? I, concerning is not the right word. I don't know what is the right word. Okay. I think it is... Uh How are we getting this many attacks, man? We're just barely... 12 minutes on this planet. Alright. Actually, that's, that's not bad. We are withstanding some attacks now. It's finally starting to turn. The problem is with this, I... Yeah, I am embarrassed. I am embarrassed. Yeah, that is, that is, that is the right word for it, I think. So, the problem with... with uh, the problem with this specific playthrough is I cannot... I cannot take my focus away from the screen like I did with Crustorio. I need to be... Doing things at all times, basically. We enjoy the commentary. You comment, that is... Uh, and the alert can be turned off. Do you have alerts for bits? I don't even know, actually. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, media covered fills that a lot. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get, like, news interviews from my... Uh, <laughs> For my country's media anytime soon though. <laughs> so I <laughs> setting up a logo for the channel. <laughs> what do you mean? Am I, am I already at that point where I <laughs> Yeah, I have I have passed that point. Long ago. I don't know. Is it too late to change my channel name and to change my, my logo and stuff? I don't know. Maybe this it. I'm in a gear. Yeah, just something simple, right? The amazing thing is that you make an impossible run look easy. You cannot hide for us now. Alright, so... A channel name, no logo, yes. Alright. Bits alerts confirmed. <laughs> yeah, it just took a while to to get in between all the gifted subs. Again, thank you everybody for for the support. It really is like literally heartbreaking almost. No, not literally, but <laughs> Yeah, but uh I think the 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 run in the which I played in the break is a nice contrast to this run, right? I mean here we are at Warp Zone eleven. We don't have a base just yet, we're still working on our initial defense. Whereas in the run, I already will have finished the game. Not by this time, but by this amount of warp zones. So... Yeah. Alright, let's uh, let's get on with the stream a bit more. <laughs> Actually achieve something. Okay, this is out. Okay, we need to grab more coal. I think I should have some... I, I did not... See, I forgot to set up coal. I was going to set up coal, now I don't have coal. Actually, I actually don't have any coal. <laughs> it's a bit late to set it up now here. Okay, we're just gonna deconstruct and warp out in that case.
I guess I could steal the coal from the furnaces, because they have twice the coal they need about. So we could... Could keep it running just a little longer here. And hopefully the next world won't be a world where coal is missing, because then we're in trouble. Well, we're not really in trouble, we can just warp out again. Alright, that's a full inventory of stuff, so let's head back. What happened to the attacks? Oh, there they are, okay. <laughs> I think what, it's so quiet around here. Right, this amount of gun turrets feels a lot better. I think our superheated reactor... We are no, no longer in danger of losing it at any sec... Actually, we are. We are still in danger of losing it any second. Because the moment this runs out or... I don't pay attention and we get into medium biters and big waves of those guys start coming. And it's still over. <laughs> but the any any second part is uh, is done. All right, iron gears. Okay. Put some stuff away. Put some stuff away. Perhaps. Yeah, I guess we're. We are deconstructing at this time. We leave ourselves a little bit of coal so that we have maybe the power plant is about to run out of coal or something. Then we definitely need it. It's probably about to run out of water sooner than it's about to run out of coal though. Come on biters, I'll, I will have deconstructed all turrets already. Yeah, thanks you. Trying to read while deconstructing. Need to kickstart some coal. Oh, this, this is not good. I have the heavy armor though. I don't have a grenade just yet, but I can make some. Heavy armor is OP. It does now one damage. Don't even care. Biters don't even care too. Hello? Hello? Oh, thank you. Now I have these things. And these things. So I can take out some groups. It's cheaper than killing them with ammo. Yeah, we're starting to run out. I think it's time to head out. We're gonna set up automated ammo production here as well. How do I have all this iron? So the, the thing is, once you're down here, you feel safe, you know? You just see this this blinks all the time, but it's alright. It's calm, it's serene down here. And then you go up and everything goes to turrets out and all that stuff. Yeah, okay, enough talking. We need to get out of here. <laughs> we need to get out of here. Okay, let's push the war button. It still takes 30 seconds as a minimum. And we are pretty far behind the last pollution peak already. This was the the uh, ocean planet, where we could live in peace without biters. It's always nice at the end of a warp zone to watch the zoomed out view of your base taking out the biters. Again! Did I save? I think that's too easy. Yeah man, that's too easy. You're not supposed... No, you're not supposed... On average you would not get these easy worlds that fast and this is supposed to be a hard run. So let's... Yeah, let's uh, let's reload that. I have no call, just warp again. Eh, maybe I should just warp again. That feels wrong too though, because if I... 
I mean, it's a it's a great opportunity to just uh, design and build a base. We could just design and build a base. Now let's uh, let's get. We had we just had one of those. It's uh, those worlds alone will we'll stream luck. Yeah, we're not going with this. We're not going with this. Just uh, give me a biter planet. This is the non cheesy run. I don't want excessive. Excessive luck on this one. Something around F. Oh, I should push the war button. Right, we get to watch another bunch of biters getting shut down. Yeah, exactly. We promise no cheese. Ah, you think this is cheesing? Re-rolling re for a, a worse planet is cheesing. Yeah, perhaps it is, actually. If I get it again, I will play it. Alright, something is missing, and it may be iron. Oh, it's not iron. It is coal. Of course it is coal. Okay, but we have coal rocks. Theoretically, we have coal rocks. The problem is we don't have a car or automobilism to go hunt down coal rocks. Right. I mean, maybe it's not coal. Maybe coal is just hidden a bit further out. But probably it is. No blaming chat this time, that is for sure correct. <laughs> Can't believe we are out here mining coal rocks just to get the miners started. Well, I, the thing is, I could use the the island to basically. I have resources now. I have a bunch. I have chests full of copper. I have two and a half thousand iron. I may have more in chests here. No, I don't. So I could have uh, actually used it to get the next uh, bunch of technologies in peace but since we just played an already an ocean world that would be first of all to also be a bit boring don't you think to immediately spend another 30 minutes just uh, slowly tinkering with builds and stuff i mean this is warptorio it's supposed to be chaos Okay, we're not going to stay long on this planet. We are basically only going to mine some iron. We have bunches and bunches of copper. I think we're just going to go... We can mine some stone, actually. Let's mine some stone. So we can make walls. Even if we don't place walls, we still need it for military science. Okay, we don't have that much actually. I forgot I don't have coal. Right, looks like the biters on this world are not so far away as in the last one. Actually, check out the boiler basement. Okay, water is almost out here. 
Let's make a bunch more pipes. And we'll connect the water pump. Um, I guess I need to make a bunch more undergrounds first. Thing is, biters may get stuck on this corner and destroy it. So probably I want to keep that corner as small as possible. Okay, we are pumping. Um, let's grab four of the assemblers. Yeah, let's just do this for now. We're gonna make ammo up here. We can make some fast ones as well. This is the beginning, the beginnings of automated defense. Look at this. Why is it ex Why did I put it exactly outside of range of the power network? I don't know. A rewind. All right, that's gonna be 400 magazines on the belt. Now we have like a visual. The gun turrets automatically will take up to 10 bullets or 10 magazines each. We have a visual on the belt, how much ammo there is left. So the chance that this gets demolished has just diminished by quite a bit, which is good. All right, these are run out. Let's try putting a little bit more in. There is some stone. We also need it for steel furnaces. Okay, those have run out as well. I think we'll just take this down now. Maybe we'll run around a bit more for coal hawks or something. But this is uh, yeah, a little bit of a lost world. It's always like this when you get a world where one of the resources is missing is the one you need exactly. Also... Actually, iron would have been pretty bad as well. If iron was missing. Well, at least we could stock up huge amounts of coal then. Now we cannot stock up huge amounts of iron. Trying to find some coal rocks, but... Looks like... Yeah, I don't want to walk away too far. First of all, it's too dangerous, and second of all, it takes too long. Yeah, I think we're just gonna give up on this uh, on this world. Okay, this one has stopped pumping fluid already. Next uh, warp tour video is coming out Friday, but if you cannot watch, uh, if you cannot wait. You can watch the VOD after the stream and find the moment where I had my break. Uh, because I played the video in the break. Well, There's going to be a lot of deconstruction work though, later on.
Alright. This is all of coal. So this is normally how it works. So coal enters on a belt. Like so. It goes into the wooden chest. It comes out on the other end. And that is how you can automate in Warptorio. So we just throw our coal in here. For now. That automatically distributes to the boiler for now. Uh, this, uh, these water pipes are basically full. Again, stuff may be happening on top, which is not very good. Looks like we are good for now. The coal miners are running out exactly as we speak. This is our bonus production, not bad. One ammo assembler was not fed. It's alright. Most of them are active. It is okay. Right, that was about all we could do on this planet. Hopefully the next one will have coal. We are already 12 warp zones in, which unlocks actually a whole bunch of new types of worlds, I think. Right, so we have some ammo on the belt. It's not completely compressed, but uh, it is also not nothing. Plus, there's 10 ammo in each gun turret. So that's 400 ammo. Or two full stacks of ammo in there. I think we're ready to just leave here, because there's nothing to, nothing for us to do here anymore. 12Z. So let's actually look in these settings. The mod settings. So... Um, these are all the different planet types, and ah no, you cannot you cannot see. Sorry, no. You, I thought you could see the warp zone where it started appearing, but this is the relative chance the planet gets selected. So that ocean planet we just got for the third time only has a relative chance of six units out of the total of all of this, whereas the normal, uh, the uncharted planet. And the average planet, which is the one where something is missing, it's not quite average actually, those have way higher frequencies. The missing planet is actually the highest one out of all the planets in the game. And uh, but some planets are not added to the pool yet. I think we cannot get the biter planet, uh, midnight, polluted, those are all way, those are all still a little bit later in the in the game. You need to, you need to be past a certain warp zone before those are unlocked. But I think most of the uh, the normal and the neutral ones now have been unlocked. Only the very difficult ones, not yet. But we'll get there soon. Yeah, rich planet is... Uh, I looked in the code and the rich planet is indeed very rich on resources. But it's also rich on biters. So is it a win-win situation? I don't think so. Because the truth is you don't need a rich planet to mine to mine your resources, right? But you're gonna stay there 30 minutes. Why do you care that there's 20 million in the iron patch? You just need the patch to be there and then you can mine it for 20 minutes before you go out, right? So I'm not, uh, unless, <laughs> unless it's like for settling at the very end of the game, I don't think this planet is actually that good. All right, I think it's time to warp out. A jungle planet has a lot of trees, but the warp platform outputs so much pollution. The trees are... They help, but they, they don't block the pollution like a normal factory. It just... Uh, the pollution is too strong. This world reminds us of home. 
Which means I should have all resources. Alright, here we do have a big iron patch as well. Alright, here we can do something. Alright. I just want to look at some stats. I will reload. Um, just want to look at the amount of ammo we are using. As you can see, naturally it goes up like exponentially. In sort of an exponential graph. So this was the world before it. We warped. Go. So basically the longer you stay, if you stay twice as long on the planet, you will use four times as much ammo to kill all the biters. Approximately. Uh, let's look at the kills. Yeah, it's, we we, sp it's, we, sp we spent uh, half an hour on that water world, so... I wish there was a two hour graph, man. The ten hour and one hour are just too far apart. This is after we got that uh, upgrade. We could stay way, way longer on the planet uh, before we are... We were pressured out by the biters, whereas before we could stay only a little bit before the gun, uh, before the biters started to overwhelm the gun turrets by sheer numbers. Now with the two upgrades where we can two shot every biters, we can actually spend some time on each planet, which is good. We are working towards being able to spend more time on each planet, so we have to set up less and we can do more. That is the goal. So the initial map, uh, I just played a default settings map. And I'm not planning to turn this into an epic end game style thing. So for the YouTube playthrough, I very carefully set up a home, uh, a home planet, which uh, has a sort of nice extended end game to it. But for here, I just uh, started with, uh, this is like a default Warptorio run, right? Okay, let's start with coal. It is time to get some green signs, man. It really is. We're gonna get some serious coal, if you didn't know about it. Ah, that will work. Oh, there is nothing on there. That will work as a loop as well. Uh, okay, some gun turrets. Probably on the north and right side, the uh, left side. Those burner miners are loud as well in large quantities, man. I've been having a lot of trouble editing my videos because in the early stages because of the sheer wall of sound which are these things. How many upgrades are needed to one shot small biters? You need uh, like s at least 650 military signs. So that is damage 2, uh, warp damage 2, and then two of the military damage upgrades before you can one-shot small biters. By that time you will have flamethrowers available, so there's not really too much benefit to doing that. My inventory is full. Let's put this thing down. Um, okay. Iron. I, I need some organization, man. That's a coal, bricks, stone, copper. We have way too much wire as well. We just need to have some on us so we can handcraft some things. And that is kind of better. Alright, let's get back. Right, so let's just do half stacks again.
no bite attacks just yet. We are already almost five minutes here. We got chased off our starter world by uh, bite attacks before these five minutes were up. It was a little bit surprising. Okay, this is like blocked, so all attacks are gonna come from the north, I imagine. Set up a couple maybe here, just to be safe, in case they do a tactical maneuver around the lake. Alright, so what's the plan? Is this just another one of those resource gathering things? It might be. Okay, so we could try to set up some actual ish plan to make some red and green research. We did not set up water, did I forget? I forgot to take my water pump from the last planet, I think. The pipe is still here, but the rest is gone. <laughs> Let's see if somebody noticed that in chat. Dwarf planet is much more favorable. I won't say anything to that just yet. Alright, yes, I can blame chat for this. Chat, why you didn't say I should take my water pump? It was not my fault. I think we are going to, for the defense of the platform, we are going to go for flamethrowers to add to the uh, gun turret support. So we're not going pure flamethrowers, but we will add in flamethrowers to basically reduce ammo spending on killing biters. That's the uh, main goal. <laughs> don't, don't, we were busy chatting with chat, yeah. Me too. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the point. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, bite attack is starting to come. I have to empty out these things. It looks like some of this is empty. That's alright. I still have some burner miners. I think I'm just put these in iron as well. Can I stay? I can possibly stay here a long time. Yeah, I should come up with a better distribution system for this. I think if I put... Normally you need one coal in the furnace for every two coal in the miner. But with the mining productivity bonuses, maybe I can take a system of inserting half a stack, taking out half the stack, inserting another half stack. That leaves 37 to... 25. That seems decent. Yeah, that's close enough. I think we're going to try this distribution method for the next warp zone, if there will be one. <laughs> there will be a next warp zone, I mean. For <laughs> if we will use these burner miners for a lot longer. As soon as we got green signs, we can switch to electric mining for most of the stuff. Right, all of this is full. That is good. Okay, we can now fill up these chests with coal. I guess this one as well. And do this. I need a chest. I need a chest to dump my inventory, basically. I need uh, some better organization in general. That is hard to do in uh, Warptorio, getting organized under constant bite pressure. I think I'll just dedicate a, a warp zone to it, actually. Okay, so these are out because there is just no more coal under here. It doesn't really matter, let's just uh, keep it going a, a bit like that. Right, 
Uh, yeah, with, with Z you can input uh, one item. That's, uh, that's one of the most useful hotkeys they added to the game. In the early days we didn't have the Z inputs. They are just full stack and half stack. Imagine the early game without that. It's really just uh, open it, take the call, input a couple, close it, next one, take a couple, input it, close it, etc. etc. Et the Z key is really very nice to have. Alright. Fighter attack's not too bad yet. We're getting a bunch of coal. Um, it's easy to lose your way in this jumbled mess of teleporters. All right, so now we got. We know we have six thousand coal for our boilers, which is way more than it needs. But now we know where to find it at least. The rest of it can go in these chests over here. Alright, so to make red and green signs, you need three chests of iron compared to one chest of copper. And then you can make approximately 1200 signs with three iron chests of iron and one iron chest of copper. So I'm going to hope I can get away with getting three chests of iron. Because with 1200 green signs, we can get quite a ways. We want both these mining platforms. Then we can make our electric miners. We can prepare for that already, actually. Can just make those miners already. And we want to upgrade to Warp Factory Floor 2. That is the smallest size, in my opinion, where you can build an actual functional semi-automated factory. The same size I used in my playthrough. It's possible here as well to just do it in stages. First you do assembly. And then you do uh, laps and that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll do that to get the initial 1200. I think we do. Alright. Yeah, I think it's a bit early for the mining platform still. Okay, I'm talking too much. Is this already idle? Not yet. I guess we need to input some iron into these as well. To we'll compensate for missing this one last time. Alright. That is, uh, suddenly we are way below a chest of iron again. So yeah, I was thinking, should I mine some copper? But no, we don't really need to mine copper just yet. We're basically gonna grab ourselves coal as much as we can. And iron. I should have maybe set up some stone as well, where it, it's actually right next to my base. Probably still could do that. And get rid of these at the bottom here. Uh, I'm not sure we can set up all of these. But we're getting some. They are coming from this. How they, oh, they are coming over. There's a passageway. There's a passageway. I didn't realize this was a passageway. I thought this was like one lake. Wait, right, let's uh, put, put the rest of the gun turrets up here as well then. Belts look empty. Oh yeah, we just did something about that, so that's good. Probably should actually do this instead. Our resource management is kind of hard in Valtorio. Also not powered. 
course, is exactly between. All right, in that case, we'll do it like this. just do it like this this one is faster so it's that's slightly better and also we get a better distribution of the different ammo uh, insertion different ammo insertion points it's hard to speak when the gunters are firing non-stop yeah i think that is quite decent Right, so now the that, that that makes sure that these guys keep on producing because at some point the ammo production is not going to keep up with the ammo consumption, and then it's good good to have some extra buffer in these chests. Right, we are 15 minutes on this warp zone. Let's see how far we can get. I think we can get pretty far actually. We are finally starting to become sort of settled. We probably need some extra... Um, some extra... what? What do we need extra of? Extra ammo. Okay. Let's just steal everything from these chests. I have been speaking about how nice it is to have military too, so I can lock this to red ammo. The sad truth is I haven't even smelted a single steel plate yet, apart from my armor. Yeah, there it goes. There goes another 1200 iron. We also need a bunch of steel to upgrade to steel furnaces once we get the yellow, uh, yellow, <laughs> uh, green technology. How is it going here? Water is alright. Okay, we are getting some of this. Just give me one. I want to put like 10 red ammo in my gun. Maybe 20 just to be safe. Right, 20 red ammo and 20 grenades for to keep myself safe. Now all my yellow ammo is going to be in my inventory. So nice and quiet down here. Alright, so this belt is full. We're starting to stash up ammo. Don't really have a good way to actually see how much ammo though. Alright, we are almost at three full chests of iron, <laughs> like I wanted. Keep spending it on other stuff. Let's go up. Oh, these are full. That is not good. Yeah. Oh, that is not going. These are full with ore now. That is bad. We start to be full of resources, so less talking. Oh, hey Spencer Bean. Strange. <laughs> Strange how it is very easy to remember some names from the YouTube comments, even if they pretend to be someone else on Twitch. By having a different username, I just mean. Not actively trying to mislead. Yeah, I took down these to build to get stone. Not really sure about that anymore. Let's 
try something like this. This is all in the range of the gun turrets. And if I look at the masses of biters here, the gun turrets are powerful enough to keep to keep them at distance. So that is good. We are going to get the medium biters for the first time. Perhaps we could get that achievement for killing the first medium biter on this world. We'll see how that goes. I think I'm still going to grab myself all this ammo. Definitely just let's grab that steel. I'm going to make myself two steel chests to drop my inventory so I can more efficiently transport all this stuff. Okay, we are getting pretty severe attacks up here now. The, evolution sp the evolution factor was quite tame in the beginning, but now it's going to the skyrocketing up. Let's actually put four digits there. It pops up every three seconds because of the pollution. That's uh, the war platform outputs pollution every three seconds, which uh, causes a big search and it speeds up for a while it goes pretty fast to medium biters after being quite slow early on medium biters start appearing at 20 percent okay we definitely need to go grab some ammo maybe it was not a good idea to stash everything Because I also stashed my ammo. So yeah, we are not so much at risk anymore of dying to biters uh, because our gun are strong enough. But if we uh, fail to notice some location runs out of ammo, then it's going to get destroyed pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to stop mining coal now because I'm really starting to overflow a bit. But so far, so far the biters haven't been able to touch the miners here yet, so that's good. I could just upgrade those to steel chests. It's not bad to have a lot of coal. Alright, now I'm going to not spend my iron anymore. Let's collect it. 20%, oh, 20 and half percent already. Alright, so how prepared am I to deal with medium biters? They have five, uh, they have four armor. So we do 3.8 damage, minus 10%, so they gain half, 70 hit points. About 20 bullets or so to kill one medium biter, so that's gonna get expensive really fast once they start turning up in numbers. Let's see if we can spot the first one somewhere. It takes a little bit longer after uh, getting past 21% because they need to collect and then make to their way over here. I still don't see one. Let's make a save. I, this could be the moment that I need to just pack my bags and leave, but I want to just see the medium biter coming in. These are all quite small still. It's good happen here. They are coming up here.
Alright, there it is. First medium biter at 248. Okay, it is time to pack up. It is time to pack up. At warp X speed, uh, these extra levels are really coming in handy when you need to do this basically every warp zone. Okay, great. Now even the furnaces start to run out of fuel. Problem is, these things are still full of iron. Or, that is. Here are two medium biters already. Yeah, it takes a takes a bunch. Okay, we have steel chests now. We can put away all the coal. We need to hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up. Okay, this is still full. You see now that there are medium biters, they suddenly start to penetrate much deeper. Whereas the small biters just get demolished. And now small spitters will start to mix in, which is quite a deadly combo. So if you look, ammo spendage, magazine. We are suddenly starting to spend a lot of magazines. Okay, we are. We need to get out of here. Okay, stone bricks. It's a bunch of those stone bricks. That's good. Is there achievement for killing the first small spitter? No, there is not. These have run out as well. I probably should just leave. Yeah, let's just leave. I want I wanted to finish smelting all this ore, but it is too costly. We are probably spending more than the ore we are smelting by staying longer on this planet. Okay, now we get into a bit of a pickle. Maybe not, we can make our escape. Before those guys arrive. Okay, everything is deconstructed. I didn't leave my water pump, which I don't have, by the way. Alright. Save game. Z, it is time to warp out. But let's actually see, um, actually we are only 3 minutes away from auto warping out. Holy moly. Why didn't you take the teleporter and let it die? Pride. <laughs> I can store one more in here as well. Alright, let's do that. Now I'll save Z. Let's actually go in editor mode. We'll research that uh, warp reactor technology. And the next one as well. And the next one as well. Let's see how long we can hold out, right? Let's also say... Because we are, we can probably hold out until we run out of ammo. Let's pretend we have a lot of ammo. Let's uh, do an experiment, see how long it takes for them to breach us. We're already getting damaged. It's probably not going to take very long. 
this may be a case where we speed up time, but let's first see. Man, it's quite, it's ramping up already. I think the inserter speed is going to be an issue. Actually, let's... Let's upgrade the hand stack size of the inserters. Okay. Yes, now they can take 3 ammo per swing. But I'm just gonna stand here next to the reactor until it blows up basically. I'll speed up time soon. It's quite a nice sight actually. Just uh, finally some time to enjoy your work, right? Oh, yeah, they're, they're getting there. They're by far not doing enough damage to hold off medium biters in numbers. Yeah, I think so too. When, when a lot of spitters start mixing in, they will get all the shots in and all the damage. Though the medium biters by themselves, look at the left side. The percentage of medium biters there is quite high already. I think we're going to die to... I think evolution is going to pass 50% before we actually die. It depends if I keep repairing the gun turrets or not. A good screensaver. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's uh, let's speed it up. You go double speed. Probably I cannot really go much higher than double speed realistically. Since the, the game is actually running at double speed. So it does all the calculations too. All the biter parting and whatnot. Yeah, lots of damage coming in from the spitters now. See how the medium biters. Let's look at this on the top corner. How the medium biters draw the fire. Well, bad, bad example, I guess. It did happen in this corner. <laughs> the medium biters draw the. Draw the gun turrets fire and the squishy spitters in the back. They got a chance to do all the damage while the medium biters are being shot. Yeah, we might not make it. Okay, I will repair the gun turrets one final time and then we'll just speed it up until we die. But the... The fact that it's the spitters who are getting the damage in, that also means that building walls does not really do a lot to stop the damage. They stop the damage from medium biters, but not from the spitters, right? The spitters just shoot over the walls. Right, here we go. Four times speed. Can we go faster even? Again. All right. This is four times speed until something breaks. Then we go to two times speed. All right, something has broken. Let's check our ammo spending. We are spending over 300 magazines a minute now. This is the economic reason you cannot stay in a warp zone. This is more than a full yellow belt of iron. A full yellow belt of iron is 225 magazines a minute. So we're at one and a half belt of iron already. So yeah, the next to the structural damage, there's also going to be the economic damage. Why we cannot stay on warp zones for a long time. That is still going to be true even in the in this playthrough where we are not cheesing anything really. We might not make it to Big Biters. Reveal map and look at Pollution Cloud. Alright, let's do that. I will put the game on half speed while we do that.
This is the pollution cloud. This was what was visible. Uh, it looks like there are many big nests uh, at this distance, which is why the attacks are so heavy at the moment. All right. So yeah, basically as long as there is ammo, we can withstand the biter onslaught for quite a while, even though we are uh, suffering damage. The real threat is running out of ammo, because of course, then all these guys just very quickly demolish the entire base. Like it will take them 10 seconds to kill everything inside, including the reactor. Right, the entire right side of the base has been taken out, including us. It's not gonna take much longer anymore. Maybe I should not stand in the asset. Alright. Oh, there goes the reactor. <laughs> right, the reactor basically... The reactor basically kills everything on my platform. My entire defense is gone. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so actually one of the old things I considered for doing this playthrough instead of building the nuclear reactor is just setting this thing to be not indestructible. And then the biters can attack this as well. The difference is this does not attract biters and this thing is not available at the start of the game. It will take you uh, several hundreds of red signs before you even unlock it. And with the reactor we get, um, we get the immediate effect that biters are coming to attack and that there's a huge threat to them just blowing this thing up. I could actually say, set this to be not mineable. So not, it is, it is uh, destructible by biters, we can just not pick it up, we cannot rotate it, we cannot operate it. Yeah, let's do that. Actually... Does that mean I cannot repair it? Ah. It means I cannot repair it. Alright, that is bad. <laughs> Let's load the game, because I made some changes, I don't really know what I'm doing. 40% evolution, then we died. Okay, so yeah, I was wrong about that. We can actually set this to be not mineable, so we don't accidentally mine that up. Because with the warp mining speed, that can go very fast. Right. So now this cannot be mined. But I can still, yeah, I can still repair it and uh, open it. All right, let's uh, get out of here, I guess. Uh, wow. Let's see what we get for the next planet. Twenty-eight minutes on the planet. Yeah. That we are really making a huge difference now compared to the early game. Mostly thanks to those two bullet damage upgrades. And the sheer amount of gun turrets we now have, instead of three on each corner. We now have 40. Alright. This is an interesting planet. Unfortunately, we are not quite yet ready to take advantage of this. Because we don't have a car, basically, and we are not about to unlock that. Uh, fast enough. This is a dwarf planet. It's a very interesting planet type where, as you can see, this stone patch is incredibly small and all the other resource patches are incredibly small as well and not very rich. But also the biters are very small and not very rich. So that means... let me save this. Yeah, this is uh, interesting. So let's actually reveal some map. You will see the nearest biters are pretty far away. 
And also the nests are like tiny. There's just like one single nest here. They're still the only nest which we saw on the map. So one of the things you can do is actually drive around with your car. Take around nearby nests. And um, that will really give you a lot of extra time before the attacks start ramping up. So yeah, like I said, unfortunately we are not quite able to take advantage of that now. Because we don't have the car unlocked and it is just too much... Walking around takes just too much time. This would have come in uh, better just a few warp zones later after we unlock some red and green signs. The thing is, once you get far away, the resource patches start to be normal. And good enough for a warp zone, like half a million. You're not gonna mine that up. And it's big enough to place your mining platforms on. I'm giving away sensitive information here about my uh, YouTube run, I'm realizing. Yeah, but the home, the home patches are literally like 8k stone. It's like almost nothing. Alright. So, what I think I'm going to do is I am going to set up mining. To keep gathering some more resources. And then I'm going to set up uh, red and green signs. So I can unlock the automatic mining modules. The harvester miners. For which I made uh, these blueprints. These are basically mining platforms. Which you can place. Uh, if I can get lucky enough to catch, catch a resource patch. Actually I can. You can place these on uh, on resource patches and that will flow straight into the harvester uh, floor where you can smelt it. So that is our goal to unlock. Uh, that is what these are about. The west and east harvester platform. A, a portable deployable platform that you can build on. So that is our goal to unlock next. Alright, so the other things don't change. The evolution is the same brutality, pollution, same brutality. It just takes a, a lot longer for biters to start reaching you. So if you see the first biters over here, we're already almost 10 minutes in. And pollution is only just starting to reach the first biters here. And it's only one nest, so there's quite a the limit at which this... Um, Okay, we cannot actually see that in at this speed, but the limit at which this nest can spawn enemies is uh, see it just every time an enemy spawns, it's immediately summoned. But it is just limited by the spawn rate of the nests here. So you can see it's uh, it takes a long, long time before you get serious pollution on any bigger python nest, which is further away. Like this is like two nests. Here's like three or four. That's already normal. That already can cause some significant trouble. Here we are already 20 minutes in and nothing much is happening. So the pollution cloud is growing slower and slower because pollution not only spreads outwards but it spreads all directions. From every chunk it spreads in all directions. So a lot of it gets spread in and out and just gets spread around. So it's kind of a slow momentum to move outwards. Slow but inevitable. Alright, now we start to reach the bigger fighter bases, but we're already at the end of the warp zone, half an hour in. So that is how this one is going to go. <laughs> you see, we easily survived until the end of the timer uh, here, where in... So, yeah. Okay, that is uh, what this uh, warp zone is about. Alright, so we know we are not really under that that much of a pressure here. I should have started to craft 32 of these miners, perhaps also some stone miners. How many can we fit on the stone? Eight maybe. Yeah. 
can actually perhaps use this thing to power our electric miners over here. So electric miners mine twice as fast as burner miners, which won't help us with iron and copper with stone furnaces directly. But because stone requires two, two stone to be smelted into one brick, um, the furnaces only need to be half as fast, so we can get away with... We can get away with this uh, on stone mining. That is what I wanted to say. And now I just need to place this a little bit more strategically. And we can also add some output chests to it. And then servers. I have nothing from Just have nothing available. <laughs> uh, my control is uh, not really speedrunner like, I would say. All right. Let's make a bunch more of those. I need 32 miners. That's 18, 19, 20, 30, 32. So miners almost get no power. We're probably out of water. I know we have a maximum output of 200 kilowatts on this thing. Uh, we need to reset. Okay, let's um, bring over power then. Yeah, we haven't up. We need green signs to upgrade the power transmission of the teleporter. If you look on the right side. It says output uh, maximum 200 kilowatts over here from this thing. It's a lot higher for the... For this one, it's like uh, 500 megawatts already, so <laughs> yeah, quite a difference. Right, actually we spent all the ammo while I was... Wasting my time on the old warp zone, apparently. Okay, I should not be too lenient. Okay, we're gonna get attacks from probably this corner, I would imagine. I guess that encases it nicely. So we don't need to put that much ammo inside until we actually start getting attacked. Okay, this will get, uh, get us our stone bricks for the military science we need for sure. Um, let's see how this fits with the cliff. Not really nice. I guess we'll just put the gun turrets in the middle, like we've been doing. Oh, that is not going to... Yeah, the, the resource patches are quite small as well, as well here. There's only two iron under that one. Alright, mining is not the main focus though, on this planet. We are going for... Building, building red and green signs, that's the main goal. Oh. I need to grab way more coal. Nice, the teleporter. Alright, everything. Furnace has been filled. Now I can do that filling strategy I just talked about. 
half a stack, take out half of the half stack, and set the other half of the half stack, and we should be good. Yeah, a little bit convoluted, but all right, oh well. We only need to do this once if I don't mess it up. I guess we need some more gun turrets on the south side. This became quite a monster. Alright, until we start getting attacked we can just work with this. Just need to remember to occasionally come and empty this out. A little bit hard to take out all the ore, or all the plates, but we can live with it. It is automatically getting extracted, so that is good. Can we reach this? We can. Alright. Missing a furnace or copper miner. Ah, so be it. Alright, the belt is full again. Okay, let us do some... Set up, set up some red and green signs. Let's actually make a save. Uh, B. Alright, so. What technologies do we want to unlock, right? We want to make an automated factory. It's damn well about time for that. So we need 300 green signs to unlock these guys, the mining platforms. 300. Do we need more upgrades to the war platform? I suppose so, but not really right now. 300. I would like to get military science going with uh, for flamethrowers. Also, that is uh, the next step towards upgrading the platform size, because at size 1 they're still quite finicky to, uh, to move around. Uh, not everything which you want to place on top of it fits, so... Yeah, but that is far away. This is, we don't need to think about it. It's like post-red chips research. But oil processing is something we want for flamethrowers. Flamethrowers is going to be important to bring down the cost of the ammo. Right, that's uh, another 100, 200, 300 green signs. So we are at, let's say, 600. 600 to get the flamethrowers and this stuff. I guess we want the car. Uh, 7, 8, 900. And engine. Engine we already calculated. 900. This one. Alright. One, let's say 1000. So I talked before about how this uh, the upgrades are no longer useful against small biters. Since we are now over 7.5 damage, which means we 2-shot them. And we need to get all the way over 15 damage to 1-shot them, which is not going to happen until uh, like 700 military signs in. The thing is though, we still can use the extra damage against uh, medium biters, which have 4 armor. So against medium biters, these are actually still pretty effective upgrades. As you just saw in the... Um, when we just let the game run until we were uh, destroyed. The medium biters, they take up a lot of the attention of the gun turrets. So being able to kill them faster is a quite a nice upgrade. For that reason, we could also consider start researching the shooting speed. Which gives us like 10% more DPS. Not really though, because every time the gun turret goes to aim at a different biter, it just takes a little bit of time to readjust itself. So while the actual shooting speed while shooting is 10% higher, the uh, actual DPS is not that much higher. So which, which even further brings down the value of these technologies. The shooting speed is way way better, especially because it immediately reduces uh, the amount of bullets need by one, right? From 4 to 3 bullets. So that's technically a 33% uh, bullet shooting speed increase. 
just by getting the extra damage. Plus it saves on, uh, it saves like one third of your iron or a quarter or something. Well, this only is a DPS upgrade without cost reduction or anything like that. So the damage is way, way better than the shooting speed. It's not even close. Okay, we want to get to factory floor two. So we were at about 1000. We need steel furnaces, definitely. Um, automation two, definitely. So this is another 200. 400, 1400. So I guess setting up about 2000 red and green signs would not be bad. 2000 red and green signs. All right, something like that. I know that with one chest of copper and three chests of iron, which we don't have at the moment, but which we are working on. Should probably make a, a raider. Actually, no, I should not because yeah, I should. And I should hook up, I should just hook up this uh, water pump here. Okay, let's do this then, I guess. Okay, now we have like a live water supply to our power plant, I assume. Yeah, this is going up now. Coal is good, so we have live unlimited power. need a lot of steel as well to make steel furnaces as well as the mark 2 assemblers which we want so let's let that run as well if, if everything is all right i should be mining a significant amount of iron ah, i see uh, this one okay let's take it out don't really need that anyway. Alright, so I guess we're going to just set it up with assemblers. I, I could just do it here. I think I, I just have way more space up here than down there. 20, 30, 40. Did I make 40 laps already? No, 32. Let's make 8 more. Okay, so that gets rid of almost all our iron gears and copper wire. Oh, we still have more copper wire here. Okay, let's take advantage of the fact that this is a dwarf planet. So 2,000 red signs means 2,000 iron gears, which means these assemblers filled twice, I think. Okay, first, first attack, first attack's coming in from the north. Yeah, maybe I should have done this inside. <laughs> Kinda in the way here. Yeah, no. Out of power lines, even, but the. Uh... Right, those gears are done for sure. Let's go with another loop. That's all my iron, basically. With this, we can start the 2000 red signs. 
these are all my assemblers as well. Maybe making 2000 at, at the same time was a kind of a mistake. Is the stream still up? Stream is okay. Alright, I got a strange preview on my own Twitch base. Let me refresh this. I saw some comments about stuttering and then I... Alright, yeah, now it looks like it's updated. Still up. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking I was talking to nobody for, I don't know, half an hour. <laughs> Alright. So basically I spent all my iron. Mostly. Most of it at least. Alright, so... Next up, we're gonna need... 2000 inserters and belts to make the green signs. Which means we need 2000 green circuits. Which means we need... It's not gonna fit. We need to make 30 assemblers full of copper wire. And that can become 20 assemblers of 100 green circuits for 2000. We just don't have the iron yet to do much else about it. Alright. Okay, I, I, I am mining copper, right? Let's go pick up resources one time. Some of them already start to run out, that is how poor these starter ore patches are on a dwarf planet. But the thing is, if you have the mining platforms, you don't need to take the starter ore patches. You can drive off and find a reasonably rich ore patch without much trouble. Yeah, stone bricks is good man. We are good on stone bricks for a while. Uh, we have a chest full of stone bricks already, that is good. Yeah, that is excellent. Alright, that is still going. This is our 2000 red signs. 2000 gears. 2000 of those. Yeah, I'm definitely not producing enough iron to to make all of that though. Right, perhaps let's let's do two batches of 1000. We also need these gears for uh, inserters. And we can get these as gears for belts. We are not going to stay free of attacks forever, as you can see. All right, so that is done. We can now change this to circuits. Actually, we, already, we also need only half as many circuits if we're going for 1000 signs for now. So we can do that instead. Let's start making red signs. No, we'll, we'll do the red signs and green signs in the inside because that's going to take a very long time. We're just gonna make it. Let's grab the 1000 gears. Uh, we need some power. Okay, we'll just copy and flip that. On this side we can then make the other science packs. Yeah. We'll just wait for those assemblers. Alright, we need more copper wire. So basically, 
300 copper wire with 100 iron plates becomes 100 circuits. That's 1000 circuits. Then we need to make belts and inserters. Okay, that should be all we need for for belts. Five inserters. Okay, let's do this. So that's uh, one. That is uh, ten assemblers making 100 belts each. And then we need to basically make inserters. It's going to take a little bit more time. But that's alright. These are done by now. And we need another 1000 gears. Which we just saved up here. And 1000 iron plates. Which we don't quite have just yet. We do, can do a half stack though. And then we can go pick up the rest. That will make 50 inserters. That is 500. We need to grab the rest of the iron. Okay, that is everything. Here is our 1000 belts. We can take these, in these ones inside now. So we can start green signs as well. By now you probably start to understand why I am cheesing in my main playthrough. <laughs> or in the YouTube uh, playthrough. Alright, we seem to have most coming from this corner, which is a little bit scary, so I'll take this down. Right, that's the first... 50 assemblers, the first 500. So now we can actually start green signs. Alright, that is 1000 green signs in the making as soon as the other inserters are done as well. Now we just basically have to do the entire thing yet again, one more time. So again, 1k red signs. Actually, it's probably better to start with green signs since that is more complicated. Yes, so far so good. We should not neglect to keep an eye on the ammo. 40, 30, about 160 ammo left in those chests. We also should not forget that we are warping out after 10 minutes. Perhaps we can... Yeah, I think we should get a head start on that. Uh, let's put down some laps. There's just no space in this uh, warp zone here. I want to get that technology which allows us to stay longer. At least one level of that. That will give us an extra 10 minutes. 60 of those. I think we have some science packs in here as well. This is going to be fast because it's a 5 second technology. The rest can wait. Uh, these are in the way with these chests, I just will lose my stuff everywhere here. Okay, let's grab the steel, which we can. Coal is still excellent. Water is good because we are pumping it in. I should try to... I should try to complete fluid handling too as well. We cannot, we need engine first. A hundred. 
and 50. At fluid handling we can store tanks of water on the boiler floor instead of these pipes. Yeah, that may be too much to ask from this world still. Although maybe not, now we suddenly have 20 minutes again instead of... Let's just start going for that. I think that's anyway the... Is that the main goal or are we going... <laughs> Advanced material processing first. Let's go this one first. Steel furnaces are an immediate upgrade to our stone furnaces. As they consume only half the coal per plate smelted com compared to stone furnaces. You don't need them for the extra speed, but... Okay, it's another 60. That's gonna be enough. Okay, it's gonna be slow because we don't have a lot of, lap a lot of laps working, but that's alright. Let's just put this in. Okay, now we can just... We still have a bunch. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to do this a bunch of times. Right. Here's the other inserters. We don't have any more iron. Probably put a chest down here with the other 500 inserters. Those still belong to this batch of signs. Alright. I guess we go pick it up. I think uh, trying to get trying to get 2,000 signs out of this is a little bit optimistic. Just making things more complicated for myself here. But we're starting to run out of coal as well. Um, too much stuff. I lost track of where I put stuff in and where not. Alpha stack and everything. Don't waste too much time. Something like that. This is all my iron. Yeah, I, this is kind of a... Let's try anyway. We can... Make more circuits. We already did all the copper wire for the end circuits. So this is going to be another 1000. We have 15 stacks of this stuff. Perfect. Let that run. Changed into bells. This is for bells. One moment. Right. It's kind of bad to get distracted while doing all this number stuff because it immediately pops out of your head when you're trying to do that. Uh, I guess we need to insert a hundred more of these in every assembler. Okay, that works out. Belts are going. This we can switch over to inserters. And I guess we'll do... 
red signs last. Okay, we are at over 20% evolution already, so medium biters are a thing now. Oh, I do have one raider already. Let's put it away. I have a feeling I'm gonna need the inventory space. It is all still going. Okay, first stack of belts is done. Second stack is about to start. Alright, so we're gonna need another 1000 iron plates. So we're gonna need to collect some more if we possibly can. Okay, th that is 1000. Okay, we can just do this. Now we need inserts again. Tuck, tuck, tuck. There's the gears for inserts though. Yeah, that's a good point. That is only 15, that is not gonna help. Hmm. I already thought it was cheap. So unfortunately we're going to have to make 200 more of those. We can maybe handcraft those. That's all our iron again. Here we again have boatloads of copper and not enough iron, that's always the case. Alright, that is the green, uh, that is the steel furnaces. I already forgot what I wanted to research so badly not too long ago. Um, Ah yeah, fluid handling for the pumps. Thanks, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's gonna take a while. Actually, it's not too bad. These are both 15 second technologies. So we can get it done. We need automation as well. Okay, let's pick up resources, if I can. Yeah, most of it has run out. Alright. Okay, the medium biters are starting to get scary, scarily close. We still need 2000 iron for <laughs> red signs. But that's easier to do in the next warp zone as well. Okay, we can start these inserters. Okay, I'm spilling these anyway. Right, let's grab a couple more laps. Something like that. We'll keep us going a little. <laughs> it's quite dramatical. All right, this is empty. I have 500 more. 500 plates. We don't have those. Let's go back one more time and hope we have them. This may go wrong really fast, though. We are getting into. 
Oh, we are out of bullets there. Yeah, we're getting into new levels of evolution. All right, I have over 500. Let's grab everything once again. It's probably the final time we'll grab everything. Let's also grab the stone bricks in case we lose it. Now some of these miners have run out already as well. Okay, we still have some ammo in some chests. Alright, that is the... Those are all the inserters. Now we just need the uh, red signs. Let's go down here. Another line of inserters. There's going to be another line of inserters. Yeah, so one more line of inserters, that's the second 2k, and then here we need just 1000 more iron gears, which we don't have at the moment, which we probably are not going to produce over here either. I think it's uh, starting to become time to pack our bags here, man. I think I'm just going to start picking up this. There was 8k in the stone mine when we came here, now it's 2.5k left over. So we, we took most of it. So yeah, that's the dwarf planet for you. A lot less biter pressure. Okay, let's see if no biters are coming. Alright. These inserters are done as well. We have now a wall of assemblers, which is not the cheapest wall material. Alright. Another... This is all the signs we need to get our base up to a real automated base. Okay, we have fluid handling. So we should probably make some of those tanks I was talking about. I know I need at least 16. Or uh, 28, I can fit 28. Probably should... Start putting do these down immediately. Uh, how did I do that? I think... One, two, three, four... Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's just connect it straight. All this water is not important anymore. Um, one, two, three, four... I think it was like this something. I think there's only three on this side, actually. So... Something like this. Hopefully we can still take advantage of this world to fill up these tanks at least a bit. What's all that blinging again? Oh, thanks, uh, thanks for the subscription, Yaxilla. <laughs> Not a very nice thing to say, I guess. What's all that blinging again? Stop blinging my chat. Yeah, something like that. It's gonna be the remaining. Stuff. Right. I also need to warp out of my stream after this warp zone. So this is going to be the last one for now.
Ideally, I would have made some engines as well. Alright. It's connected on both sides, that's good. Let's make this a one way. So it's streaming through the tanks. We can later pump it in once we have pumps. Something like that. We need some coal storage here as well, but now the we are going to get loads and loads of water in here. Okay, how much steel do we actually have? We have more in chests. Doesn't seem so. Alright, we need so these are damaged. Oh, we need to get out here, man. All chests are empty now. That is not good. Yeah, okay. I think uh, we need to get out of here. I think we need to get out of here. Also, it's only five minutes. I mean, the attacks are not zero anymore. Let's uh, drop our inventory. All of this has run out. That's all right. Okay, here we have been damaged as well. We might just get those um, 2,000 iron plates like this, which we still need for red signs. So that's a uh, that's anno an annoying point to leave off in the stream. We're almost having completed a goal. Hopefully I'll remember this next time. <laughs> I need to make 2,000 uh, red or 1,000 more red signs, or at least 1,000 more gears. Okay, my. That's not good. I have also left my. Um... Ah, no, I didn't leave my warp teleporter. Yeah. So, indeed, you can just warp back through it and let this thing get destroyed. We will be fine. Okay, I do have the 2000 iron exactly to make the gears, but I won't just yet. I think we first need to invest in more ammo. And we have to hope the next world is not going to be one of those missing worlds. Alright. So that is 2000 iron into ammo, almost two chests of copper. Okay, now actually let's um, fix some of the stuff. I cannot fix that. <laughs> I cannot place that thing to fix it. Uh, my st stuff is over here. Alright, I think then... Are we ready to warp out? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, like 50 subs or so before uh, starting the stream. Uh, it was a, a little bit too crazy if you ask me. Water pump. Oh yeah, I'm still I'm still biding my time. Trading iron for water. It's probably a bad idea. We don't have a real base. Oh, yeah, I should not do that. We don't have a real base just yet, so we don't actually need that much water. Why am I not researching? Let's just research something small. Military science. And... We'll leave the rest for next time. Yeah, that's too expensive. Okay, we are warping out. That's uh, safe. Warp out. Grab the pump. And that's gonna be it. I'm going to... Save. I already saved. And we press the warp button. But we're not going to look yet... What world we are going to warp to. Actually, I will reload. I just will reload this next time. For the epic ending. Not too epic. Actually, pretty sizable attacks for... Uh, 
dwarf world are coming, starting to come in now. So yeah, 40 minutes on this planet almost. But you cannot really count this like uh, an achievement since the biter bases are so sparse and far away. So just like the ocean world, I would not really count this one. Anyway, um, I have to head out. So uh, yeah, thanks a bunch for uh, watching and uh, checking in on the stream. And uh, everybody, thanks for all the subs and the gifted subs. And uh, for all the views as well, I never had so many viewers before as today. Yeah, what the heck, man? 167 subscribers now. I had a goal of 69. This is for fun. Because I had like 50 or something. This is just insane. <sighs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for chatting. <laughs> and, uh, man, yeah, thanks for everything. A hundred over target, yeah. <laughs> nice. Thanks, uh, Red Excel, for completing completing my goal the last two digits of it <laughs> okay, what type of world did we actually get for next time another one of those uncharted ones these are a little bit unpredictable I think not too bad though we might we might get a different world next time because I will reload the last save so yeah this uh, was was the first 15 warp zones 14 and warp zone zero so how far did we get in twice the amount of warp zones i promised to finish the game like in the playthrough not really far we got a couple of we just did our first green technologies basically <laughs> whereas i have to have finished the entire game in my youtube playthrough if you haven't seen it go check it out there's a link to my youtube channel somewhere here on twitch and you can check out the series what happens if you cheese this so basically you do, you do not need this, you can just get rid of all of it, let the biters come, stay underground, do your thing, use the dist remote mining platforms to get resources, and you don't need to spend all this time worrying about your defense and spending a lot of resources for it. So quite a contrast to this playthrough. So yeah, for now again, thanks for watching and um, keep an eye on the my planning about when the next stream will be. It's probably going to be next weekend. I don't think I have extra time in the week to pull off a stream, so probably next weekend on Sunday around 12 o'clock-ish again, like today. Same day, same time, basically, I guess. Uh, 12 o'clock uh, CET, Central European time. Alright, enough blabbering. I'm heading out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.